Let's get this party started. It's kind of early. <laughs> what do you think of this? Oh, um, just letting somebody sign nope, in. Nope, you don't want to go to Wayne Martin. What's, what's that? Mine. Right. Okay. What they we want. have mine, too. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Um, <laughs> I got no control. <laughs> there we go. Oh, do it again. Hit it again. Oh, I don't know. I have no Play control. <laughs> Darn press. I have no control today. <laughs> uh, welcome, everybody. And uh, as we were just in closed, we've already moved into open, so we're back into open. So we'll just get started. And uh, we've got a couple uh, delegation, uh, public meetings today, so we'll get rolling. And everybody survived the storm, I guess. That was wow. quite a little hit there that we had. So the power's good. We'll try to get through her. <laughs> Okay, moved by Councillor Faulkner, seconded by Councillor Elliott. The minutes of the June 4th, 2014 council meeting be approved as circulated. All in favor? Very good. Oh, come on, Campbell. <laughs> moved by Councillor Turton, seconded by Councillor Faulkner. The Town of Minnow Council convenes the Committee of Adjustment. All in favor? Uh, committee of Adjustment public hearing. Uh, I did too. I'll chair the public hearing, uh, officially open the public hearing, and publicly state any decision reached by the committee today cannot be used as set a precedent. Each application considered by the committee is dealt with on its own merits, and no two applications are exactly the same. <coughs> the public hearing is to consider a minor variance application file number A714, Aiden Martin. I'll call on the Secretary of Treasurer to state the address and legal description of the property and the purpose and effect of the application. The dates notice were sent. Thank you, Mayor Bridge. Property is legally described as part lots 9 and 10, concession 6, 64896 line, Town of Minto. The purpose and effect of the proposed variance is to permit construction of a liquid manure tank with an MDS 2 setback of 76.2 meters or 250 feet to the nearest neighbor's dwelling, whereas subsection 6.17.2 of the town zoning bylaw requires a minimum MDS2 setback to the nearest neighbor's dwelling of 183 meters or 602 feet. Notices were mailed to property owners within 200 feet or 60 meters of the property and applicable agencies and posted on the land June 6, 2014. The town and mental staff met to discuss the application <coughs> Council has a copy of the staff report. Uh, it refers to the fact that the drain has minimum flow, which uh, it's municipal drain number, drain number three. Town of Mental staff is that they receive the recommendation is to receive the report. From the County and Wellington Junior Planner, Jameson Pickard, he notes that the relief requested is substantial and alternate locations for the proposed manure tank were considered in our evaluation. Alternate locations which would comply with the required setbacks would push the tank to the back of the barn further away from the dairy operation and manure pile and into a currently cultivated field. As a result, the runoff would have to be pumped to the tank. The proposed location makes sense given the current setup of the operation and provides an opportunity to take advantage of the grade of the site. Staff recognizes that an open manure pile exists immediately adjacent to the tank, proposed tank. As a result, the proposed construction will improve the containment of manure storage on the property and will improve the nutrient management system for the farm. On that basis, it would appear that the intent of guideline 46 of MDS2 would be satisfied. They have no concerns with the relief requested. Provided committee is satisfied that there are no alternate locations on site to accommodate the proposed manure tank. Maitland Valley Conservation Authority has advised through Brandy Walter, natural hazards as identified on the attached Conservation Authority map. The liquid manure storage tank is proposed within floodplain. Floodplains are recognized as natural hazard lands as per section 3.1 of the provincial policy statement. The one zone floodplain concept is applied in rural areas where the floodway is the entire contiguous floodplain. 
There are no natural heritage features on the property, but the storage tank, tank should the storage tank be permitted, <coughs> fish habitat and water quality would be adversely affected should the tank be flooded during a regional flood event. The recommendation is the manure storage tank is proposed within the floodplain hazard lands. Application A7-14 does not conform to section 3.1 of the provincial policy statement or the authority's policies made under Ontario Regulation 16406. As such, the Conservation Authority does not support the application. Correspondence from Ronald and Margaret Blair of 64976 Line, file A17 Committee of Adjustment hearing, and noting that they intend to attend the meeting, they request a copy of the decision. They do not object to the construction of a liquid manure tank on the subject property. Our objection is to the proposed location. In addition, the information provided in the application is insufficient. Proximity of the proposed structure to a residential dwelling on an adjacent lot. The proposed MDS-2 setback of 250 feet is a very significant reduction, hardly minor, from the required 602 feet. At a 250-foot setback, the structure would be almost as close to the dwelling at 64976 line as to the farm dwelling on 64896 line. Floodplain restrictions and risk of well contamination, odors from the storage area and prevailing summer breezes, significant negative effect on property value. That's all the correspondence at this time. Okay. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Applicants opportunity to present. Aiden? Would you like to come up? If you want to come up into the uh, mic there. Is, uh, Have a seat, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Yes. Good. Well, I, I'm glad to be here and uh, to uh, voice my concerns here on this application. The, uh, we've uh, got an area operation here at that location for uh, 17 years, and at times, long times change, and the. Uh, Feel at this time, uh, as time has been going on, we've been seeing a lot of runoff coming off the mill yard, and there's only one direction it wants to go, and it goes off the yard. The lands it wants to go to the creek, like which I feel is not exactly, but uh, it'll, it'll seep that way. And, uh, and I guess when we we build, we build the uh, so we could. Uh, in the manure as solid manure, but out of the area manure wants to separate, and then we we know to be good stewards of the land, and uh, we want to drain our manure in the tank. And we had proposed to build a liquid manure tank straight out from, from the manure yard, the sixth manure yard, so we could uh, do the gravity flush system, uh, which uh, we thought was quite feasible. And, uh, but uh, in the meantime, I did talk to Ronald Blair for about a, a time back and we didn't get a lot of feedback right in that given day and I'm not holding anything on that either. But we did um, get a letter from Maintenance by the Conservation Authority as of yesterday, which I thought was a little stale data for me for the day. <laughs> and I couldn't get any feedback and or uh, or Terry Kuyper's on the issue uh, because uh, the time is not it. So it never proved to, to me at any given point in time that we're, we're uh, farming with an OER etching a floodplain, which uh, is grassland all around. And, uh, and uh, but here it's it, uh, uh, I get pretended that it's a, it's a flood plain right up to my barn. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, but we didn't get a permit to build the existing dairy barn and uh, they're operating on it today. Mm -hmm. And now I guess um, we 
like to go and ask for the deferral on this so I can talk to men and valid because uh, I don't really have any input from their end um, where they're going to be happy where we can put it. But uh, um, if it's uh, not feasible at that point in time, <coughs> we are likely gonna be willing to move it to where we have to. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'd like to make it as feasible as possible that I don't have it in the back 50 and the calendar on the front for it. Right. Right on. Aiden, is it the same letter that we, we have here? Is that the one you just yeah, got? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you just got it today? I just got it today. Okay. Um, yeah. So, and I got uh, a pretty good layout from it and uh, hmm. of, the, of the regular blood plane and uh, all of what goes with it. And we're likely, um, yes, I. I've been talking to my nutrient management planner too, and uh, we've, had, uh, we've had differences between Grand River, uh, uh, what I would call the Grand River of uh, Conservation Authority versus uh, the, uh, the main valley, but um, they all got a different pages on the zoom. Yep. And uh, but, uh, that what do you think they would do? Is it well, they had so many issues, they don't want to have the current going to a creek. Okay, so you you wanted to you're going to defer until we get more time to talk to. I, I, I would prefer to defer. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay, well, it wouldn't hurt to have a little more time to, to look well, into it and make sure we... we should be, take that time to talk to them. Yeah. Because I've submitted this application and, and if we want to do something, we don't want to stop in the middle of the ball again now. Well, appreciate you. You've already recognized there's possibly a problem with the, with the manure getting to the creek and you want to do something different. So, That's what like, yeah. yeah. So, what, why don't we... Uh, is that... Mayor, uh, Mr. Chair... We are convened in a hearing. Yep. So, any other person should uh, you should have a chance for sure. them to come forward, yep. and then Mr. Martin would have a chance after that if there's any questions that come from any from the public. And then mm -hmm. I have motions prepared. One of which is to defer if that's what committee chooses to do after they hear from people. But okay. since we called the hearing, we probably ought to allow them to speak <coughs> too. Okay. If they choose to. Thanks, Aiden. If I get you to step down, is somebody want to speak? in opposition good evening good evening good evening, good evening. my name is ron Baer. okay ron my wife margaret is here okay our address is 6497 right line. and we have your letter mr clare yes yes we have held that property Perhaps when he first sought to purchase the property, 
and he telephoned me and asked if I would have any objection if he made an addition to the existing bar, a small addition. I said no. The addition turned out to be larger than the existing bar, with the manure at the end. Look at the map, you see how much closer that brought it to us. Now, this is going to be dumped at the end of it. If you read, as I have read with great care, all the governmental publications on the subject, they do not dispute the notion of moving a liquid manure tank out to the and pump there, which will make it easier, in fact, to spend money. So I'm not quite clear about why this is ruled out of order. <coughs> Let me make it clear that the issue of odor, as the minimum distance separation, first recognizes the odor question. And the issue of odor is not an insignificant matter. And the prevailing reasons, which are all spelled out in these documents, mm -hmm. Which adversely affect us. But the same question. It is stressed in these various government documents, most of which are written in a form of English, but nevertheless, it is stressed that due concern should be given to the interests and accommodation of neighbors and adjacent properties. I know of nothing that has been done of that sort in our case. After almost 30 years of residence, we are going to find ourselves with a property which another neighbor said to me two days ago would be worthless if we attempted to sell it. As we pointed out to a would-be buyer who said, what is that? You mean you say, oh, it's a liquid manure tank right in front of your eyes. So there is a very material question involved as well. The issue that the Lincoln Authority is talking about is not to be dismissed. It's a one in a hundred year. And it is a rule. We're quite clear about it. There are major water issues, and we have issues with the weather and with the climate already. That creek comes up to the brim in spring runoff. It's not a minor now. At other times, of course, it's fine. But that's our boundary. So I'm saying to you that there are alternatives. <coughs> Some of you may have been brought up as I was in Victoria, this is for Samuel Smile, self-help, <coughs> bestseller in a day. And one of these cliched statements was, a place for everything and everything in its place. Well, there is a place for a liquid manure tank, but its place is not <coughs> at the end of the existing manure place. You can transfer to another location. And that is done elsewhere, and it in fact is recognized in these documents. In fact, it is all stated with <coughs> approval in these documents. It may be more costly, I do not know. But I do not, do not want to be the one who bears the financial burden. And uh, I take that very seriously. That is my statement. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. And I think that's why we have these public meetings and open meetings, because <laughs> it's not a done deal until we get all, all the facts, right? Indeed. Yeah. More to come, I can assure you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I have not exhausted my capacity. No. <laughs> Thank you very year for your uh, report. Thank you. So, anybody else? Yeah, just one more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good evening. My name is Dennis Harper. Dennis? I'm just west of Aiden. Mm -hmm. Very busy agenda here this evening, so I'll be very brief. Part of my statement hinges on some very part of this four years of experience. 69 is started my farming career. 79 of us selling key ventilation and manure handling equipment and it's stolen. Before I started working for a silo company, 
relationships with the partner I bought. I don't know if you uh, build farm cells or rent them around the country to do manure tanks. Mm -hmm. Had a lot of experience with manure tanks. This particular <coughs> tank has no objection to the tank whatsoever. It's location is front of the floodplain. And there's odors in the country. Aiden is good steward farm. He is farming. And there's odors. That's just the way it is. And part of his post to the person's property evaluation is a definite thing in that case. Manure tanks have to be agitated or watched in order to get the build up of solids eliminated so they can be spread out, not cause problems down the road. Gravity flow systems require a lot more flushing. It's disorder. When they're filled, this, this point of filling is going to be the lowest part of the farm. The point of filling tanks often, as I saw just last week on the 6th, is where it's grown. Tanks overflowing, filling from the side of the hill. The whole tank's going to be drawn up the hill. A lot of noise, a lot of dust. 100 acres of farm is behind the burn, not in front. A lot of noise, a lot of dust, a lot of water. Today I saw a manure tank that was a mile and a quarter from the barn being pumped. It's on the for different reasons, but it's mm -hmm. over. I think the idea of gravity flow is very good. It's a cost saving measure. My opinion and experience has shown that oftentimes they're converted to a pump system later on. That's neither here nor there. The point is, I think this is in a floodplain too close to the neighbor's property, and it will affect that neighbor, not me. Only that neighbor, it will affect Aiden too. That's Aiden's issue. I firmly object to it being placed there. It can't go behind the barn. That's where all the lines got to be drawn to. If the pumps can do that, then that's the cost of farming. That would be my submission. Thank you for your time. Have a Thank great you. Day. Thank, Thank you, Dennis. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, Mr. Martin, do you want to come back and, and talk about any of those issues now, or do you want to wait till it to, if you wanted to go to the deferral? Up to you. No. I read the report. <coughs> Concerns. Um, we, we feel we're not here to create a burden for them. We want to work with them and, and class them as our neighbors. We appreciate always uh, on both sides, uh, Harvard and uh, and uh, on the other side. Uh, we uh, feel uh, it's been put to us and. Uh, I think uh, <coughs> uh, the concerns are, are not of concerns, which I also have, and I guess, as I mentioned, in terms of continuing, we want to we go on, and uh, I don't exactly know what maintenance is ex expecting out of us. Uh, we have to deal with them first, and uh, we feel that needs an alter coordination on, on a different location uh, than uh, <coughs> that satisfies the neighbors and, and also satisfy, satisfy our needs. I guess when I come in, I'll Do you want to say something to
look at alternative locations if that flood wave is where it is. Um, and there's a spot that may work, which will be outside of uh, any cultivated field um, behind the barn, which will also increase the distance, uh, push the perimeter tank further to the south uh, behind the barn, and increase the setback to the property to approximately 400. Be back in here. That's what's going on here. Yeah, yeah, that's where they're talking about. Yeah. Uh, on the aerial, it's directly to the south of the yeah. inner yard. It will require them to pump it, but um, that's uh, possible. Okay. So Gary? Oh, sorry. Yes. Um, I, I'm interested in this floodplain uh, line. What would the elevation of the existing manure yard the creek. I honestly couldn't tell you. It, it does slope towards the creek, obviously, otherwise the creek would be where it is. Um, but to give so you just a, a definite number, I, yeah. I, I don't think yeah. it has a yeah. guess. Um, Mr. Martin, would you uh, hazard a guess what the level of the existing manure yard is above the creek? Yeah, the floor level, if you drew a straight line out of what that elevation would be above the creek. Oh, I'd probably say we're uh, it's sloping off, but uh, not as much when you're down there on level ground behind the barn. Our gutters are probably six feet above the floor level at the present. And that's why we thought of a gravity flow system to take it down and take it out. But, uh, Anyhow, the water table is, you've got to be three feet above the water table, and that might bring the tank up so high that the flush system might still not work. So, we yeah. haven't done tests, and there's some of the things that are, are unknown. Sure. But I probably say we could be probably at four or five feet, if it's that, but not a lot. It's pretty flat. Right. Yeah, pretty flat. Pretty flat. Okay. Thank you. I don't know. Okay. Mayor Bridge, if there's no other uh, thanks, thanks Terry. speakers we're deferring we do have a motion to defer what what should happen then is when the matter comes back to committee we should invite the neighbors who attended this meeting to uh, give them notice when it's coming back so they can see the alter alternate right. proposal it might be a good idea if mr. Martin shows it to them as well in, in advance and then maybe they don't need to come to the next meeting if it is in a better location but I think Committee, what I'm hearing is committee wants to give time for that to happen. So I do have a, I have a motion, I have three motions, one to approve, one to deny, and one to defer. So if you'd like, I could re read the deferral one. I would suggest read the deferral one. Yes. That the committee of adjustment defers the minor variance application by Aiden Martin for property at part lots nine and 10, concession six, uh, six, four, eight, nine, six line, town of Minto, and request the applicant amend his uh, proposal proposed setback of 200, 250 feet from the nearest neighbor's dwelling to an alternate alternate location on the subject property. I'll move that. I'll second move. Second by Dave. If we could get all, them signed. all in favor. You guys sign. Good. Thank you. Coming. So just to confirm, we will give notice to everyone who was here that yeah. when this matter comes back to committee. Everybody signed in, I hope. <laughs> Everybody Where signed in that wants to know. You? Okay, good. Yeah. Moved by Councillor Elliott, second by Councillor Caldwell. The Committee of Adjustment convenes in the Committee of the Whole. All in favor? Got to do additional items disclose the other business anybody got any I have one. Oh, ron has one i have one also two rons 
Terry can have mine. Terry can have yours. Three. You know, we've got three Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I got a couple. I might have one. Okay. And Dave might have one. Yeah. <laughs> it depends on how long the meeting goes. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies. Uh, um, major one. So a public meeting next. Next public yes. meeting, right? <clears throat> we have another public meeting. Um, I'll chair the public meeting and call this meeting to order and request any members of the public present please sign in the attendance record. Um, I'll state the following, that if a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the town of Minnow before the bylaw is passed, the person's or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the town of Minto to the Ontario Municipal Board and the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of the appeal before the board unless in the opinion of the board there are reasonable grounds to do so. I'll turn it over to uh, CEO Clerk White to state the municipal address and legal description of the property and the purpose and effect of the application of the dates notices were sent. Thank you, Mayor Bridge. This is an application for lands owned by Gerald Newman by applicant Doug Spears. The lands are located at uh, lot, 33, lot 336 and 339 in, uh, in, in Clifford, and they are on at the corner of Allen Street West and Getty Street West. The proposed amendment is to rezone the subject lands to permit uh, their use as a contractor's yard. This would include the storage of building and construction materials, equipment and machinery. The current zoning only permits the wholesale fuel, wholesale sale of fuel and accessory uses. Notices were mailed to property owners within 400 feet or 120 meters of the property and applicable agencies and posted on the lands May 26th 2014. Comments were received from the Town of Minto staff. Report which is attached. The recommendation being that the Council consider a bylaw in open session to amend the Town of Minto zoning bylaw. They note that the proposed use is a contractor's yard, that uh, the proposed use is more appropriate than fuel, the f fuel depot use. There is an open space buffer between the subject property and the town land, which would be the former. CN lands which we have acquired for trail purposes and residential purposes. Uh, public works, this access to water sewers, and sewer services is available. There are no he well heads within 100 meters. There's a planning report from uh, Manager of Planning and Environment, Mark Van Patter, he's here. Mark, would you like to come up? Thank you. The Sogging Valley Conservation Authority had no concerns with the application. There you go. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'll just go over my planning report to Council briefly. Um, <laughs> as you know, it uh, looks like the current zoning on the property is uh, close to the field. I'm not sure how far that goes. That's way back.
Church compatibility, um, mm -hmm. as the CEO mentioned on one side, the east, the rail line, so that's actually pretty good. The west, the two lines. And uh, I just make a site visit to me. It's very well received on the most part of all of them. So that looks really good. <coughs> so I think it's potential for neighbors, especially if they're in the gaps. Please go. So. Yes, sir, you, you worship. Um, the contamination issue, it, will it become an issue at all when change is zoning or? And there's no um, risk of exposure during building processes or things like this if they are building. The tarp structure. Okay. Ron and then Ron. Ron first. Um, for my, I can take a pretty well close guess on how long the the property is. What's the width of the property that we're <coughs> here somewhere? Because it goes a whole block, and then but it's narrow. No, it's not narrow. I saw that somewhere. Fifty feet. Yeah, standard lot was sixty-six by one thirty-two. That's what I figured it would be. And then so, yeah, so it'd be double lot. Double lot. I didn't see the width anywhere. Okay. Yep. Because I'm assuming the structure is 40 by 80 if it's 3,200 square feet. Okay. Ron? Um, just, it's sort of like a phase one is just a history sort of thing. And a, is, has that been done formally or do they need to have a phase one done on that? Um, I think. Yeah. So if the soil is not going to be broken, for example, then it's usually not a problem. There wouldn't be a problem with hidden tanks or anything, something down the ground that we don't know? Yeah, whatever is there, the damage is there. If, if there is tanks there, yeah. the damage is there. 
at that time. That's, that that time that would be not the problem. That'd be the problem with the property owner. That's correct. Yeah, I mean, it's not a perfect solution. Perfect solution. Mm -hmm. So when, when, in effect, when when it needed that phase one, then it would it would have to be effective at that, that time. And that would be the, the owner's problem. Then. Thanks. Okay. Um, just under the clerk's comments, there's a the second part of the second statement. It says proposed use to ex exclude fuel storage. Does that mean that he couldn't put a tank on there for his vehicles to store fuel in? Uh, if I may, I think what we were suggesting there is what, in fact, planner did in the bylaw is that we don't allow any more fuel storage as a main use. So the only main use that would be allowed on here is the contractor's yard. If he had fuel storage as part of the contractor's yard as an accessory use in a properly approved tank, that would be allowed, but not a fuel depot, which is what it used to be. Yeah, no, that clarifies that, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mayor Bridge. So when the tarp structure, would there be uh, footings and walls to hold the structure up and was it be, would there be excavation? Uh, yeah. Likely. <laughs> another chair. <laughs> Bring another chair. <laughs> Should have two chairs. Uh, typically, turf structures are constructed in three methods. Um, you do have. Turn on. Um, you do have the conventional footings and foundation. Um, the more popular is solitude, uh, and then the rings attached to the solitude. are also is. If I may add on the issue of contamination, it becomes an issue if it comes off this property. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then it becomes a spill and that's an MOE issue. When we did buy the uh, rail lands, there was no evidence of that happening. We did do an investigation with an engineer and, and they did focus in because of the historical use. So at this point, we don't have any evidence of it migrating off the property. So we don't believe it's an issue here. I was going to bring that up. I thought we, when we were doing the real properties, we did look at, because that's where we researched that there was a uh, depot there at one time. And so we had a little bit of background on it. So, and we didn't find anything. Okay, any other questions? Thanks, guys. Well, just hang around just in case. Eh? There always could be questions. Go anywhere. Um, I'll call the applicant or his agent to provide comments regarding the proposed amendment. The applicant, applicant, right want to speak to it? Can't turn that mic on. Let's see if that mic, yeah, that mic should be turned on. The only reason we like the mic is that a lot of people actually watch this on, on Whiteman and on our website. And well, they can't hear you, it. then they, they wonder. <laughs> actually, <laughs> Gerald Newman has an uh, environmental assessment, I think, on the property, Probably, too. yeah. I would because that'd be one thing to look at as far as uh, mm -hmm. if it's uh, contaminated or anything. Right. There, so, and as far as the building goes, I won't be doing much digging. It's going to be like a fabric building if it goes through. And uh, I haven't purchased the property yet, oh. but I'm trying to uh, have to get a reason first and then go from there. Okay. So, did you it. want to answer any of like? Are you familiar then with the what the? Uh, uh, what Mark has mentioned as far as the buffer and all those. Things. What's that? The well, he's talking about tree buffers yeah. and. Uh, um, no, like actually the whole thing is surrounded by surrounded trees Surrounded by too. trees, pretty and close. And there's uh, a gate at each end, it's lockable, and a six foot fence around the whole perimeter too, also, so. We, we, I didn't know there was a fence. Would that be part of the zoning, Gary? Yeah. Okay, so would that be part of the approval process? Yeah, basically before 
Right, so it's site, okay, so that'll all be done later. And yeah. Just talk yeah. about those little things, that, yeah. but you heard it tonight, so. Yeah. Okay. All right, any questions for? Yeah. Are you talking about a coverall structure? Yeah, something yeah. like that, a okay. fabric uh, structure. That's what I figured it would be. Yeah, yeah something like that, not a steel building or anything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Good. Thank Anyone you. wish to comment uh, in opposition to the proposal? Somebody, anybody? Just, just if you could make me say who you are and and I'm Mike Stevens. Uh, Mike, okay, I, I thought it was Mike. Yeah. Right next door. Yep. Yeah. On the right at the first one, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. 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 And uh, I've met Doug. Doug's uh, approached mm -hmm. the subject with us, and I don't think we really have the only. We don't have any objections, really. You have a few concerns. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I had no idea that the thing hadn't been zoned construction in the first place because Gerald's been operating a as a construction a contractor well. I know I know that surprised a me pile too of noise out there for about 15 years now <laughs> and it's an eyesore to look at yeah he won't look after the thing or cut the grass yeah. it's got sand and gravel and stones and dump trucks and floats and in his heyday he had his boys out there at 6 30 in the morning loading all that crap onto their trucks <laughs> my wife's a nurse she works a lot of nights yeah. sleeps a lot of days or tries to and that's my concern is this, you know, once it's been zoned construction, if that happens, like I really have no idea what's going to go in there. Suppose Doug decides to sell it, mm -hmm. you know, am I ever going to have a say ever again once, <laughs> once it's been mm -hmm. sold and what was in there? Because I intend to be there for a long time. And, you know, I don't think anybody particularly wants a contractor yard beside their house. I don't think any of you up there do. It's no matter how hard you try to look make it look nice with structures and hiding stuff in the structures, uh, they're an eyesore. And there's always noise involved with loading forms and running bobcats and trucks and floats. And that's my concern anyway. I, you know, I, I, I just can't help but, you know, like I say, I, I thought this was already zoned construction anyway and there was nothing I could do about it because Gerald and his boys did make a hell of a pile of noise back there. And he couldn't ever have given a damn about what it looked like as far as being contiguous to my property. Like Cindy and I have always, if you drive down that street, it's one of the nicer looking houses on the street. We've landscaped it, we've looked after it, we take care and pride in how it looks. And I'd like to, you know, I think it's going to stay that way. Yeah. I, I was actually at your house at the ho on the house tour. Yep. <laughs> we, That's right. Where for, yeah, I was. Yeah, very nice I, house. I, uh, well, I'm, I'm glad you like yeah, it. Uh, very nice. But yeah, that's that's really my my only concern. Uh, yeah. It's like how, do, how does how did they use it for construction? Is it never being shown that way? It was. How did Gerald get away with using it for 15 years that way? And how does Mr. Spears already use it <coughs> already that way without the changing the bylaw. It's like I do it first and then I Bill? I can't answer about how it sort of happened, but typically there's a building that had a former use in it. Someone moves in it and sort of changes that use a little bit and it becomes a, a yard and then the use expands a little bit more. And it just happens over time without anyone ever actually properly applying. It might have some legal non-conforming status under the, which means it's a lot, it was a use before the current zoning was passed, but, uh, or it may have been something that really at the end of the day wasn't really legitimized or legal until the gentleman has applied for it now. So um, it would be a complicated situation to try and prove what would and would not be allowed back 15 years ago when, whenever it started. So I think what's proposed here is zoning to try and make it clear. It's going to be a contractor yard and just a contractor's yard. I guess the feeling from the town staff was that that's, that uh, it could be more compatible than say a fully operating fuel <coughs> depot might have been. But again, I, don't, I wasn't around to know what it was like back when it was a fuel de depot and nor to even know when it was in fact operated like that. But for my time, probably been many years. But. So I think it's just kind of a, an evolved <coughs> use over the years from fuel depot into some other kind of use in the interim. And I think what's proposed here is to 
clarify it once and for all what they intend to do with it. And the, and the new purchaser wants that in place uh, for, so that he can be assured that that is the use that's allowed. It's a long, convoluted answer, Mr. Mayor, but mm -hmm. that's probably the best way of describing it. So this is a chance to try and work with the planner and the new landowner to try and make it as good as, as compatible as possible. Terry, do you want to maybe, right yeah, I was just wondering if you could speak to, like this is what I was trying to get at earlier, what, if we do change it and make it more conforming to what it, we're going to have, is there a way we can do some, some of the site stuff and can we have it in there that there's some rules and regulations if it varies from it? Because that seems to be what's happened now. It's varied from what, what yeah, it might have been. All that stuff is, let Gerald look at it once. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The buffering provisions in the zoning bylaw are the attempt to mitigate differing land uses um, between each other. Um, so essentially it's to screen um, the residents from the industrial use. Um, that's what Mark has, has written in there. Um, anything in addition to that um, that council could put on the rezoning would be to require site plan control. Mm -hmm. uh, what that would do is yeah, has to be kept in mind it's still an industrial use but it can limit storage areas and what's being stored to specific portions of the property that's the only other option that I can think of I don't know yeah I think maybe what would be a good idea is for um, <clears throat> Mr. Spears to put together a more detailed plan of what he's going to do and, and how he's going to use the property for council um, like I know the building you said might be part way it's up. It's in, in the middle of the lot, but we don't know anything about where the trucks are going to be parked, yeah. whether, whether he's going to have outdoor storage. Um, so he could provide more information that way so we know what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's, you know, if he's not going to have outdoor storage or he doesn't need it, then we can put that in the bylaw. Mm -hmm. No outdoor storage allowed in this property. And, um, you know, in terms of parking, we can, you know, limit the location of where vehicles are parked. But I think we need to know what's going on there before we can do that stuff. Can we put site plan control on? Well, well, that's we're just talking. It, about it's better to go through. As if we can do that. I think you can, but it's better to do it, get it through zoning too. Yeah. I mean, because site plan control only covers certain things in the planning act. There's a list of things, and um, it, unless you specify in the zoning that all the parking's got to be over here, there's no real control on site plan mm. control that says you can't move it. So it's, it's better to nail it down through the rezoning process. So, and I don't, <clears throat> I'm not sure if uh, Mr. Spears is going to store all of his forms inside or if they're going to be outside, um, you know. I wonder if Mr. Spears, can we ask you, if you would come up here? I'm sorry about that. Okay. It, it, that's sort of what, <laughs> it's all right, we're, it, this whole thing's pretty informal. We just want to get down to the Play points, the and I don't know whether you figured it out in your mind, I'm sure you have, how you want to, have the site and how it's going to be operated in your yeah. mind. Well, what I want to do is put the building up. I'm going to have everything stored inside. Okay? Right. All my equipment, everything. So there's nothing laying around. I actually look a lot better than what it is or was before. So, mm -hmm. so I mean. So you, you could work out a plan, a more detailed plan yeah, to show I can, us? Yeah, but basically it's put a building up, put the material inside. I got forms. I got a small excavator, mini excavator. It's not going to be like a all full blown construction uh, site because. Well, no, I just want to make sure that it's yeah. going to be kept. Mm -hmm. It will be. Tidy, mm -hmm. clean. Yeah. And the grass will be cut and all that stuff around the edges and stuff too on yeah. both sides. So, but it's, um, no, I, like it's not, it's basically kind of going to be a hobby for me mm -hmm. when I retire from my f job and uh, I got to have something to do. So that's what I'm looking for, mm -hmm. you know. So this opportunity to come up to buy the property and so uh, that's what I'm going to try and do. Okay. It works out. All right. And, and I guess my next question would be, if Mr. Spears down the road, we do the change in zoning and, and sells it, <laughs> the new person coming in, would they have to go through any kind of how the, how the 
property is kept. Kept. The, the, the way that I've got the bylaw right now, the only use is That's right. So, or something different. Like I say, a house contractor would have a heck of a lot more stuff, maybe, or somebody else. Would, you know, that's what I'm saying. So they'd have to come back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's grasses going around the edges of the trees. Mm, not likely, no. Yeah. Well, at least in the driving area through the gates and stuff, I'd have gravel there going out. But uh, I mean, most of the area is covered with trees all the way along both sides. And uh, the only thing I'd be doing with that is maybe trim the branches off the sides. I think it's uh, there's only one tree I'd look at cutting down on the. On the uh, on the town site, that is one big poplar that's got branches broken on it and stuff. And it's an eyesore. So, mm -hmm. would, it, would it be safe to say that you you two would communicate when this if this does happen? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Good good neighbors. Oh, yeah. I don't want to see you guys in a fist fight or anything. No. No. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Like the previous owner. Mr. Mayor Bridge, I just wanted to ask any of the current materials that are on site <coughs> are being moved with the sale or will Mr. Newman's uh, stuff well, remain? Well, actually, I'm actually renting some of the property. I got some uh, form material on the property right now. But and any of Mr. Is, Newman's stuff will come off the property? He hasn't got hardly anything there. He's got a container at the far end and he's retiring. So okay. he won't be uh, doing a minimal work. He just does a little bit now. So okay. he won't be doing much. So it'll be taking, you'll be taking it over. And he's putting yeah. all that stuff in his backyard. Right, just your back there. Yeah. Anyways. Like well, is, thank, is, is there a lot on it right now? <laughs> is there a lot on it right now? Bill? Of stuff and... It's just on that site, actually. It's not on your site. No, well, it's on your site. Well, if you want, I'll move them out of there. Yeah, I'll move it out of there. I wonder if it might make sense for people to discuss it. Because it's a little bit of a Well, if it had been a short one, it would have been better. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, Mayor Bridge, we have a draft bylaw, but what I'm hearing is that we're going to need some changes to that bylaw, and, mm -hmm. and uh, the manager of planning and environment would meet with Mr. Newman and perhaps the neighbors and come up with a bylaw with some restrictions that no outside storage and where, mm -hmm. and that should be written right into the wording of the bylaw, and then that's there for any future landowners as well. And we should be able to get that back on the next agenda and get it done. Next meeting. Yep. Get so it done. there is a motion to approve uh, uh, the bylaw that you'll have to turn down or, or table later on. But we're still in the public meeting. I assume everyone who's going to speak has spoken. But you have to be all right with that? Yep. Right that? Yep. Is it where it'll be, I think, uh, July the 8th. 8th. We'll have it up and running in. Hopefully we can get, if you guys can get together and organize that, sure. then we'd have that. Thank you. Okay. We just want everybody happy here. It's all we want. Yeah. That's what you live for, isn't it? <laughs> no more questions. Except for Mark, he's never happy. Look at him. He wants to get the heck out of here. How does state, if you wish to be notified, decision of Council of Town of Minnow in respect to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment application, you will make a written request to the clerk of town at Minnow 5941 Highway 89, Harrison NOG 1Z or the email at bwhite at townminto.on.ca. No further comments. I will adjourn the public meeting. Thanks for coming. We can get that all figured out. Good. Thanks.
The four years okay in the same hallway there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mark be the referee. No delegations. Public question period. We managed to get rid of all the public. <laughs> right up through that earlier. <laughs> You know what? That might have to, we might have to move 12 up to that. Are, are these guys public or what? Sorry. Sorry about that. Correspondence received for information in the requiring direction of council. Any questions on the correspondence? It's great to see the Terry Fox run again coming up. Excellent. Motion received. Deputy Mayor Fisk, Council Turton, all in favor? Gary. Reports, committees, town staff matters. Uh, and the first one be the Wellington County Economic Development Group. Oh, wow. Minutes. Yeah. I guess I'll speak to that. Where is it? Yeah. Is there any uh, questions on them? Yeah. We're just continuing on with our uh, BRE uh, inputs, and uh, everything's going well. They're we do have the uh, events guides out there now. I believe I brought some more in for Belinda if you guys want them. They're very small this year. But uh, I know at our economic development meeting in uh, today at, at the county, it's really working well. I think we've got almost 4,000 hits on the website. And the idea was to get these small pocket ones out and people could go on the website and then get further information on each one of the events. So. That seems to be a big, uh, a big win. That's 63% increase from last year at the same time. So that seems to be getting out there and everybody's using those. Well, I just motion to accept. Councillor Hemley, Councillor Elliott, all in favor? Carry. Mm -hmm. okay. First protection, committee minutes. Mayor Bridge, very briefly, just noting on page four that they are still dealing with comments on their source protection plan from the Ministry of Environment. So that particular plan likely will be year end or it's approved. Okay. Any other comments? Motion to accept. Councilor Hamley, Councilor Faulkner, all in favor? <laughs> Harry. <laughs> Staff reports. Send that over to. Are you doing that one, girl? <clears throat> Mayor Bridge, this is a. The next two are severance applications to the County Land Division Committee. So these are reports from our staff recommending conditions that might apply should the county choose to approve these severances. The first one is a lot line adjustment by Walter and Barbara Flathley. And they're part lot 33, concession 5, fifth line. And the applicant is proposing, proposing to sever a 0.34 acres and merge it to an abutting property. So this is to create a one acre residential parcel. Uh, the county planner has no concerns with it, uh, nor does the Maitland Valley Conservation Authority. Um, the conditions being request, requested are that there be a safe entrance to the property to the satisfaction of the town and that the parcel be taken in the same title as the abutting lands. And so those we're recommending that this application be approved. And the two conditions are that all the financial requirements of the town are met and that a safe driveway access is provided to the satisfaction of the town. Move by count. Oh, sorry. Questions? I just wanted to ask. I know the maps are prepared by our engineers, and but <laughs> like, if you want to go out and look at the properties, it's very difficult knowing exactly where they are. Um, if if they could put fire numbers or something on the properties, like we did find the mailbox. So, but which side of these? Where is the severance exactly? Is it? on the lot that their house is on or across the street? The, uh, I'm just looking at the drawing. There, there's a barn on the property. So this would be on the north side of the fifth line. And so the severed lot is to be merged with the lands to the east, which would be, if you're looking at the drawing, to the right. So there appears to be a bank barn across the road. 
but this there's a frame barn on this property and there's also a manure concrete and manure pad they're not showing a home on that property What's your main concern on it? My main concern is that if we did want to go out and look and at look at it, yeah, yeah. Look at it not so much on the actual, right? Yeah, that in the future the maps could be more explicit as far as lot and concession number. I agree. Doesn't really. Yeah, help if you get down the right road, if you have the fire number, you're pretty well to make that's it. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's why we have them. <laughs> I'm sure, there's a few people miss fires because they didn't have the. But the it's the biggest fire is if you missed it or not. Yeah, that's right. That's probably. true. Fire's probably a bad idea. Okay, <laughs> any, anything else? Thank you. Okay. Did we have a mover in second round? Right? Mover, but yeah, oh. we had these two guys. <laughs> After all that. Oh, that. I don't really think we had a mover in second. Yeah, you had Ron yeah, and then she had a question. You had Ron and then she had a question. Oh, okay. oh, and I'll second it now. Okay. All in favor? <clears throat> okay. Second severance application, <clears throat> Mayor Bridge, is 24 George Street in Harrison, which is the Former Harrison Senior School. This is to sever lots 7 through 11. They're shown on the site plan that's included with this property. It's one that you've done a lot of work on over the years. Um, these lots 7 through 11 are to go to the Land Division Committee. Lots 1 through 6 were created at the time we severed the or sold the property to these uh, Metzger brothers and their development company. Present. We are reconstructing this portion of George Street where the tender drawings are currently being prepared. Um, we signed a site servicing agreement with these purchasers when they bought the property and that agreement has been registered on title. And in that they do gain access to the sanitary sewer and water but they are to construct the uh, water service laterals and they're also to contribute toward restoring the pavement on George Street. So uh, part of the conditions that we're requesting is that the financial requirements of the town are met to the satisfaction so of the town. So before lots 7 through 11 are actually legally created, any payments that have to come to the town for those laterals and pavement restoration are made. That's also covered by the condition that pertains to servicing arrangements. So where driveways are located and that sort of thing also has to be confirmed. Uh, you'll recall there is a seniors housing portion of this development which would be where the former school is and a drive will, ha will, will have to be located at that uh, on that parcel as well so we've got servicing arrangements need to be made to the satisfaction of the town respecting driveway installation <coughs> service laterals and entrance to the seniors housing lot i think that's supposed to be rear seniors housing lot so uh those are the conditions <laughs> we're suggesting Missed that. Um, the stormwater pond we retain ownership of, and the lots to the beside that, I guess mostly to the north, lots 12 through 21, those will not be created until a draft plan of subdivision is applied for. So at, that, at this time right now, that is a block, uh, one single block of land, as is the stormwater pond, as is the seniors housing block. So when these severances, if they are all approved, and you have a county staff report attached lots 1 through 11 would be created questions it's not with respect to this matter but I'm um, could you refresh my memory as to when the school has to be down uh, December. December of this year it is this year mm -hmm. and how they, they are working towards doing that maybe earlier than that are they not though yeah, I, th I believe that's, I th certainly think they'll meet that time frame, but it depends on what they choose to go ahead with first. So I think they're keeping their options open at this point in time. But I'm confident they're, they'll meet that in our agreement. We do have a small amount of security to cover that. And if it's not done in time, we can go in and do it and charge it against the property. So, but uh, they have every intention of complying with that. Anything else? Motion. Councillor Elliott, Councillor Faulkner, 
All in favor? And you have one more bill. Thank you, Mayor Bridge. This one I have to talk a little bit on. My apologies, I'm sure you've all read the report. Yeah. This, this report deals with council remuneration for the next term, not this term. Uh, bylaw 2007-03, now almost uh, seven years old, uh, stipulated pay for the past council and the current council. The base pay for mayor is listed in the report, it's 11,440. Uh, the deputy mayor, 9,440, and the councillor, 8,440. The per diems are set out in there, and so is the uh, um, uh, for council meetings and for other meetings of council business. A um, couple of other claims that are allowed under the current bylaw, which were not made, never made by this council, and that was a chair would receive $20 per meeting extra, for, and that was never called. No one made claims for telephone calls that I know of. Most of you have phones now that you use, or all of you. $20 retro pay for 17 years. Let's get it <laughs> done. <laughs> and uh, 17 years. During, during the terms, you <laughs> yeah. did adjust the meal uh, allowance uh, requirements so that you got $75 per day but uh, with receipts, but, but uh, you didn't break down how much was spent on breakfast and so forth like that. So now back in March, we did have a resolution on clarifying how expenses were to be claimed. That would have been 2013. And you implemented some new guidelines and those are listed in the report. And that actually did result in uh, some, some less claims coming in from the councillors on per diems. Um, what's outlined in this report uh, is, is how, <laughs> where we would like to see the next council move in terms of uh, remuneration. Most recently, Senator Wellington did a comprehensive review of 15 municipalities, including all of the Wellington County lower tiers. Um, we probably should have reported to you earlier on what to do for next term's remuneration, but we did know that this survey was going on and we just recently got a copy of it and it is actually quite well done and very comprehensive. So we're thankful to Senator Wellington for doing that work. Just about four points that I want to make clear here that come out of that survey. First of all, the base salary for mayor and council is the lowest of all the municipalities surveyed. And those amounts have not changed since 2007. Um, that's a concern for me as your uh, head administrator. I think that's lagged far too far behind. And so uh, our, my recommendation is that, uh, our, and I'll go through them later, is that that be adjusted. There's only one Wellington lower tier municipality that does not have per diems for meetings and still Minto's overall payment is similar or lower than that municipality and it is quite a bit lower than the other lower tiers in Wellington as well. Some of the other Wellington lower tier municipalities are getting paid group benefits for council. Well, at least one of them has some OMERS payments. Some of the other municipalities have OMERS for council. This, this council does not have any group benefits paid um, or and council is not enrolled in owners here. Um, many municipalities have car allowance provisions and make mileage claims. Uh, none of the councillors claim any mileage in Minto. So only when you are traveling out of the town are you making any mileage claims. So I think that uh, that's sort of a summary of what's out there right now. The four issues that I identified were uh, are, uh, in terms of what we need to talk about a bit today for the next council is whether we still have a base pay and an attendance based system. In other words, a certain amount of base of payment for work that's done and then uh, also reimbursement for meetings that you attend and uh, as a councillor and our, our recommendation is that we keep that form of remuneration for the next council with some modification. Assuming you're still going to have some sort of attendance-based system, how can we make that policy clearer? And we do have some suggestions for that. Also, because it has been seven years since our amounts changed, can we conclude some provisions for cost of living increases that may need to happen over time? 
Uh, I do have a concern that this has lagged relative to other municipalities here. And uh, I think I would like to s ensure that uh, our future councils uh, are remunerated at what is a fair rate and, and at least c comparable in some ways to the others in Wellington and other area municipalities. <coughs> In terms of uh, the base pay, I mentioned we are I am recommending that you continue to have a base pay and an attendance-based system with a clarification in the per diems as follows. Um, a suggestion that meeting claims are not permitted for ceremonial functions such as grand openings <coughs> or community events. Um, some councillors put in for those, some don't. Um, I think the expectation would be that if you did increase the base pay, that attending those functions would be something you would do as part of that work. Edu educational sessions such as new counselor training, running effective meetings, conflict of interest, source water protection or similar would be approved by the mayor before attendance happen mm -hmm. and uh, before mileage is claimed. And that's, I mean, I, I think strategically we've always supported training for council and staff and I think this just puts a little bit more onus on uh, the next mayor to make sure that the things that are being attended are, with, are, are appropriate for that particular council. I, I would say that, that that has not been a problem this term, but I think it could be clearer in the policy as it stands. I think the idea of having a committee chair um, uh, meet with staff, that could also be covered under the base pay amounts. Um, that wasn't a very frequent claim, but there was occasional parts of that. And it's just easier for if we did put the base pay up to a higher level than you, when you meet with staff and, and so forth, you don't have to keep track of that and you don't have to file a claim for that. So some of this is to help with ease of claims as well. Um, the other issue we had, we did have during the term is participating on provincial boards. It's something certainly that we do encourage our staff to do and it's recommended that you continue to encourage all members of council to do that if they can get on boards such as AMO or Good Roads or rural municipalities or OSM that's to be encouraged and what what we're recommending is that when that happens that they be permitted to attend that convention that year in addition to whatever limit you had uh, in the in the bylaw before which was two some of the feedback that has come back to me from councillors during the week was maybe the limit on mayors and the limit on, on councillors could be higher or lower or maybe not even at all and you simply be allowed to attend as much as you can within your budget amounts. Mm -hmm. So it may not need to say eight or five or whatever for councillors or mayors and two for councillors if you can go for to three sessions based on your budget of um, 3,500 3, then you go to three sessions so and my just a clarification I don't know I, I don't know if any mayor ever went to eight I don't know how you get to eight <laughs> I think the maximum I've ever gone to is three yeah. is are we open for comments mm -hmm. three from your not done yet. Yeah. Or is this just to report the bill I think it's not done yet if I could no. just yeah Mr. Mayor, sorry, did you want me to finish my report yeah, or sorry. take questions? No, no, don't take, finish your report. Okay, I just, sorry. You just mentioned it there, so yeah. I just, um, Anyway, my recommendation for you is, is as follows, and you may want to split this out and have discussion on in each one. The first, that next term, the base pay for the mayor be 15500 the base pay for the deputy mayor be 12500 and for a councillor be 10500 um, the second is that they decrease per diem costs by redefining council business to exclude per diem claims for ceremonial functions, meetings with staff, and education sessions that are not approved by the mayor. That we keep the same per diem rates at 150 and 85, 150 for a four hour plus meeting and $85 for a meeting under four hours, but eliminate the $20 payment for chairs that the cost of living increases if are, are approved by for staff be approved for council by resolution that the $25 phone call charge for conferences be removed and that the daily meal allowance increase from 75 to $80 maximum and that 
<coughs> council members be permitted to attend <coughs> that participate on provincial boards be permitted to attend the annual convention plus two others um, you could also look at reducing the mayor's number from eight to five or some other number <coughs> or eliminating that uh, uh, and just uh, making people stay within budget and finally that eliminate the restriction on spouse attendance currently the policy says spouses may attend half the uh, spousal expenses may be covered for one conference basically for council members um, nobody has claimed expenses for spouses we have paid for spousal attendance at some programs most of them are eliminating those programs so uh, we would eliminate restrictions on spousal attendance and just rely on you to stay within your annual budget amount uh, finally we still have an outstanding matter to deal with uh, councillor Elliott's registration at AMO uh, if you were to adopt this policy uh, something similar to what I would recommended to you uh, he would be permitted to attend AMO so I have included that in my recommendation to you so uh, certainly willing to answer questions in terms of budget amounts for conferences and so forth that amount is set at your annual budget meeting so the, this council uh, has set those rates for this year the new council will set its budget amounts for next year okay now we're ready for questions yeah Councilor Faulkner through you uh, Mayor Bridge um, the FCM conference that a lot of us were at would have taken care of almost that $3,500. Uh, I'm going to suggest by the time you pay registration, hotels, meals, and all that kind of stuff, I'm going to suggest that that $3,500 fee figure is unrealistic. I, th I think it should be like uh, for the cost of going to um, conferences. Uh, I, I just think thirty-five hundred dollars is cutting it really close, yeah. or if too low, low, if not too low. Just yeah. my comment. I was That's just going to add, FCM though was unique in the fact that it, it sure was, was in Ontario, I and normally we go to Good Roads mm -hmm. and to Amo. Mm -hmm. Would those two conferences stay within thirty-five hundred? Uh, it depends on. It, it depends on a lot of things generally you have stayed within your conference budget as a whole <coughs> some of you are over a little bit some of you are well under so um, I think you can go to both and, and it's pretty close uh, but but that figure the 3500 is set in the spring when we do the budget so you would if you if the next council when they do their budget they'll have to look at upping those oh, increasing those okay. amounts Okay. Back this council when I started had very very low budgets and if you went to more than one you're well over. I so think we increased those budgets to something more realistic yeah. uh, through you I guess in 2012 or 2011. I remember the first year we were on council <laughs> the policy was two, two uh, conferences so we thought well that's the policy so we went ahead and did it but the budget was set for basically one. We had a thousand dollars. So we had a thousand dollars was the overall. So unless <laughs> you were going to hardly covered registration, you know, all of us stay in one room. Yeah. Um, but but anyways, but that's, that's a budgetary item. I, and I think from that standpoint, we haven't been we haven't been overspending on 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 your conference. But you need that figure for your budget, though, right? Yeah, you need so, that for the budget. But if you're going to two conferences, I would hope that the town would pay. For your two conferences, if it's thirty-five hundred and four dollars, I'm sure the town will kick in the four dollars. If you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and that's like I said, I know I know Gord needs a budget figure, and that's what you're looking at. And 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 sometimes on budget on on that, if you went to a say a symposium, which would be a two-day one, that's well under what what a regular. I mean, there, we have some symposiums that they're shorter ones that you have for certain organizations. Like FCM has symposiums where if you wouldn't necessarily go to the FCM main one all the time, but the symposium, I think, Terry, you went to one of those. I went sustainable. It was in, it, sustainable, Windsor. and it was in Windsor, I think. It, it wasn't that, was it? I don't know. Do you I, remember? I, I'm not sure what the registration okay. was. But I know it was only a couple days instead of four days, right? So. 
Councilor Elliott. Um, Mr. Mayor, I think I think we could solve a lot of that if if we just put a comment at the end that anything outside of any of these regulations, Mayor and Council could could approve, and that way, if if you've got caught in a situation where your meal was more than seventy five dollars, which we know in Toronto that could easily happen to you, all of a sudden you're caught in something that's. Uh, that's outside of the budget and in you're with other councils and you're you're it's, it's part of your conference um i guess it could come back to to ask the the mayor and council for reconsideration for that that event or what would come forward and if it happened to be fcm for example knowing that the costs are going to be more than just bring it to council and ask their, their uh, permission or or ask after, but we could put something, some of that, in there, so that that would give some leeway. Attitude. Yeah. Hey Bill, sorry I would interrupt. You were going to say something. I just one of the things about your expenses is that they're reported, so anyone can see them each year as to what they are and aren't. So, yeah. and uh, and they're quite clearly outlined in the budget, and and you've been very good to stay within those expenses. And I do want to emphasize that we're talking about the future council. Mm -hmm. The next one and that right now of all the, all that were surveyed and there's 15 of them this is the lowest paid and so I think you've been very very responsible but I do think that you've lost some ground and so I would like you to certainly consider some en enhancements here and, and I, I guess to the uh, just a comment for for everyone here is um, I know when I signed up for this um, it certainly wasn't Money related, and I think everybody here yeah. got on council to better the community, and uh, maybe that's why we let it slip. Uh, you know, like I said, but I don't think it was ever a concern of anybody. The eight thousand dollars, I thought that was a bonus, to be honest with you. So, it, whatever you guys decide to do, I'm, I'll, uh, I'll support you. And I, I just want to say, I, I, it's very awkward for you to, <laughs> as councillors, to say raise. this. <laughs> so that's why I'm saying it for you. I think it needs to be. Um, appropriate and, and you're certainly still being conservative even if you were to adopt something in the range of what I'm recommending you're you're still well below the uh, the base salary of the other Wellington municipalities Mayor Bridge I, I think it's appropriate for this council to do it now for the next council I mean I really do it's pretty hard for it to come in in your first term first year and give yourself a, an increase. Um, second thing, the 15 municipalities that were surveyed or that you looked at their remuneration, was there, was there, what was the size of the council? Um, what, was there, were they larger, were they smaller? Uh, because I think, uh, you know, seven on council is, is a good size because there's a lot of committees and uh, and I think that's likely one of the reasons why. And I know when amalgamation occurred, there was five. Yeah. And Rick was on yeah. amalgamation, I think. And uh, there was a lot of work to do. There was a lot of <coughs> uh, a lot of issues. And I know that it was tough on that five, and that's why it was bumped to seven. Tell me if I'm wrong on that. No, you're Rick. correct. It was um, so 23 months of. I don't want to use the word hell, but I will. It was. It was. It was tough. busy. It was. Yeah. A lot of communities, a lot of, well, it was, it was a new community. Mm -hmm. it, it was, five people wasn't, honest to God, five people wasn't enough. So even today with, with the new committees and all that have been struck, five people, the next, the next turn. Turn. it's tough to have five people go around, if you will, and likely seven is good, where I know that there's, I know that I'm pretty certain that Wellington North is five. Mm -hmm. I don't know about anybody else. And, but I think, um, Senator Wellington and and us are seven. The others appear to be five. And the municipalities sur surveyed out of here are between five and eleven. Actually, sixteen, but that's Wellington County, so kind of exclude them. They had Milton, Halton Hills, Georgina, Orangeville, Grimsby, New Tecumseh, and Woolwich. So they're between five and eleven. And I think we had a. Uh, I think Southgate, and I think. Um, we had a report from uh, Southgate, I think, when you re reviewed us with Southgate and Wellington North, and what was the other one? Remember? Oh, it's right here. Oh, Terry has it. I got that. Yeah, it was, uh, and I think Southgate has seven. Do they not? Eight? I believe so. 
So yeah, Campbell had that had it. I, I thought it was well well done, written up, and sort of did it based on all the different things and per capita. And I think we came out not too badly on that one either. So that's sort of like a little mini survey that you do every year, just to see where everybody is. I, I, I don't think I think you're right, Rick, that people don't come here to do do it based no. for the money. But at the same token, if you don't have at least some money there. It makes it awful hard on somebody that if they have to leave their business at a certain time or whatever, and I think you limit your ability to attract people to to a council as well. So you have to be careful you don't get too far behind the the eight ball on that too. And, and you know, like seven people honestly isn't isn't a lot of people. If you look at our community, what we do, I think we do a lot more than the other communities with the with our different groups. Um, not, not to belittle the other communities, but <coughs> but you look at what we're involved in. It's uh, it's busy here in Minto. We have a lot of infrastructure. We have a lot of uh, which some of the communities don't have that much infrastructure <coughs> in Wellington. Some of the some of the other lower tiers um, don't have as many. Some of them don't have arenas. Some of them don't have those things. So there's a lot more of those committees that we have to have, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I just um, are we going to do we. Are we deciding on everything right with one no, resolution, no, or Separated how are we going to do this? Well, that's what you said. I think we have to have some feedback here, Mayor Bridge, and mm -hmm. due to the deputy mayor, and that this is not a bylaw. This is just a, a recommendation. So I would bring something back to you for official voting. But yeah. you know, if you could give me some direction on at least the set eight things that I provided a recommendation on, and then anything else you want to add in, I, I would bring it back. The other option I mentioned is some communities will refer this to a, a citizens committee to go through. Um, I've seen it done both ways. I think where we are right now, I think it'd be quite, uh, I think it, I have no problem recommending you improve something for this, for the next council without having to go to a citizen committee and so forth. I'll not be here. So uh, the answer is, <clears throat> You're not approving anything tonight. I would like some direction on my recommendation. Do you want us to bring you our thoughts, like <clears throat> send you something, Bill, or write something down? And what I wondered is if committee council wanted to deal with each one sort of separately. Yeah, that's, we could do it that way. Yeah, uh, tonight and just say if you're principle. generally in favor of number one, which is you know 15-5 for the mayor and 12-5 for the deputy, or 10-5 for the councilor. Did you want to see that increased or? stay the same. I certainly would not want you to go any lower than that. That, as I said, is still lower than the lowest municipality in Wellington. It's base salary. Uh, right after that, Rick. Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Bridge, Bridge Bill, right the CAO Bill, is that, have you it's figured that out in percentages, that, that increase? Because that, that's, that's the first thing you'll hear. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, it's, if you want to you'd be it's, honest with you, it's $4,000 for the mayor over 11, so Mary Lou, what's that? It's <laughs> substantial. So yes, it's 34. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to get into percentages, it's 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 large. But on the other hand, if you agree with some of the per diem reductions, then the overall cost of council, in my opinion, isn't going to go up dramatically. So yeah. it's not going to be pretty about about the same. And th that's what I was going to say. Your next point is decreasing per diem costs for redefining council business to exclude per diem claims for ceremonial functions, meeting staff. I I think that you would see a lot of decrease. In, in your per diems now that you have to put it in per diems because you're really only getting 11 or you're getting 9 or you're getting 8. So I don't, like, like I think your number of 24, and if I look at that other sheet, Terry, you had there, can you bring that back? I, I don't perceive the next mayor, I don't know, wherever he's going to be, whatever, but getting much more than what they're getting now. Like, I think it'll just change it up a little bit is how you do it. Because you know when some of these some people already have it and they already get it up front, or the councillors already get it up front, right? So that's sort of what I'm looking at. So I, I'm just looking and at I what the mayors. The other thing is that the stress that it's been since 2007. So if if this was on an annual basis of cost of living, at the should have been done per have, year. Yeah, wouldn't have been as drastic. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think the other thing too is uh, the majority of us were new at this when we started and 
we weren't given a lot of good direction as to what we were supposed to, what we were expected to be claiming and not claiming. And um, since Bill has clarified that, I think it it's better, and and I'm assuming it's going to get better mm -hmm. after this process is finished. So I I think I think that that was long overdue, and it's unfortunate that wasn't done at the time we started or prior to us starting. So I think it's a step in the right direction and uh, it is unfortunate that that hasn't been kept up, but um, there's a philosopher in the town of Minto by the name of Joe and he says, if you pay peanuts, you'll attract monkeys. <laughs> oh, <gee. laughs> <laughs> well, I've been a monkey a for 17 years, my friend. <laughs> and I know Joe's He's the organ grinder. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mayor Bridge, can I assume that you're okay with number one? <laughs> um, need a motion on each one? I, I would, a direction would be fine. And yeah, uh, we're going to, we're going to. You can do motions if you wish, but I'm going to bring it all back to you anyway. Yeah, so I do. Okay. if you could go through and kind of give me a consensus on them. Okay, 10, 12, 5, and 15. I like even. How's that sound? No. <laughs> what do you mean, no? Because well, you're going down. Fine, then. <laughs> so generally we're okay with one? Yes. And two? So you're going to... So through you, Mayor Bridge. I'm sorry. Yep. So we're going to even get more clarification on per diems. Is that what that's basically yes. stating? Basically what would be eliminated would be uh, putting in a claim for a ceremonial function. So the launch at Minto, for example, anyone who went to that opening, technically now if some, can claim, some claim it, some don't, this would mean you would go to that, you would not claim it. The mayor wouldn't claim it. I would assume the deputy mayor or whatever wouldn't claim it because now they, whoever brings base. greetings technically claims it now, right? The chair. Or some other people do. And, the, and then the chair of the... Uh, of a committee if they meet with the uh, public works director on a day for a couple hours to go over what's coming up on the agenda they wouldn't claim for that again that was kind of inconsistent some did some didn't some did one time and didn't the next time so it uh, this would put it under uh, a base pay amount as well so that would that would be clarification under number two okay and just if we could go back to um Page two, you talk about back-to-back -back meetings on the same day. Yes. So if you had a meeting in the morning and then a meeting with a different group or a different committee or whatever in the evening, would that be back-to-back -back meetings? Or is it if you <coughs> did two meetings in the morning? Right. Um, again, that one's kind of been... Uh, I would say if you had a meeting in the morning and then you had to come back for a meeting in the evening, then that's often $85 each time. Mm. Um, but if you had a meeting in the morning as uh, in recreation and a meeting in the uh, later morning in uh, economic development, normally most of you put in 150. Some would put in 85 each. <laughs> this would mean it would be 150 if your meetings were in the morning. If they're separated by some time, then it could be 85 for each. So again, it's a slight reduction there. And again, most of you just write them down. You may not even know you do it. So sometimes it's claimed as two meetings. Sometimes you think, oh, well, I was just here on, and you put it in as one. So it's sort of inconsistent how you do it. All of you do it. So it just makes it easier. Sometimes you schedule for staff purposes too. You may yep. schedule two meetings in a row yep. so that staff can be, save them their times and, and they're there anyway. And I, I think that's why sometimes it's done the way it's done too. So this would just clarify that and you wouldn't have to worry about it anymore and just be done. Right. Uh, through you, Mayor Bridge, uh, the one thing that I was never clear on when I first started is what was included in the base salary. Mm -hmm. uh, I was told originally that's just going to council meetings. Right. That's, that's, that's all that was. <clears throat> and, and that for every meeting you went to and above, you could, you had the right to uh, so put, in, put in a charge for that. So, um, it, is, is that what you mean by attendant base and attendance? Because it was never, I don't right. think you were involved in attendance, right. was it? You probably don't even know because you didn't put them in on your claims, but 
uh, we would check the council meeting minutes and the treasury paid you fifty dollars per council meeting you attend you didn't get paid if you so didn't. you didn't put those on your sheets you only put the council business correct so you were under an attendance based <coughs> um, session system for council meetings already so you were getting fifty dollars fifty dollars per council meeting you attended and that's going to you weren't deducted unless you missed more than three there there's no deductions no deductions no you okay. just get paid for the meeting you attend okay. so technically your base salary doesn't really cover your council meetings you get fifty dollars for two dollars for a council meeting it would cover in my mind prep preparatory work so you you're not that. claiming reading the agenda and going and looking at sites and talking yeah. to people about applications or whatever yeah. talking to each other whatever politicking you're doing or the post right. office or the LM <laughs> or the gas station right. or wherever you know that, that takes up times and yeah but you're technically your uh, council meetings you get paid for 50 bucks so we've already been here almost two hours now so woohoo we're rich hey. <laughs> so I had a meeting after the ball <laughs> Uh, I am I wrong in, in saying that I guess the way that I looked at it is if you're on a committee if you've been assigned to a committee you charge for those meetings yes mm -hmm. if it's anything other than the committee that you're on it's your choice to go and therefore it's it's not chargeable like it's it's a ceremonial thing or it's an open it's a launch it the other night that, yeah, exactly. like, I don't put for that. Like we're there for example, a couple our hours. Our volunteer night that we do. Mm -hmm. You know, anything that, that we choose or that we don't, we're not, we haven't got a commitment as a committee member of that committee. Now, am I wrong on that? You want, no, any committee that you've been put on. You charge for it. Charge for it. If you go to one that, then just because you want to go and listen, because, you know, maybe there's something on the, it, in prac, and you're not on prac, but you just want to go because right. you, maybe there's something you want to listen to or whatever, you wouldn't yeah. charge for that. Right. And I don't think there's been a lot of that. That. I was just trying I, to I, I review them. Councillor Faulkner, is yeah. that your interpretation? No, of no, no, no. That's not what I was getting oh. at at all. Okay. okay. What I was getting at was what was expected from the base salary yeah, for eighty-four hundred dollars. Eighty-four hundred dollars. Right. That's for you being a counselor, my friend. Yeah, that's, just being yeah. good looking. Well, I think lad. that's bringing your skill sets to the table. The fact that you, as you go to the post office, or and we all know we're twenty four seven. That's the beauty of being a municipal politician. You're with the public, so when you're stopped and talking to people anytime, that's part of your salary. And that phone calls, phone calls, all those things are, oh, that you get at home and whatever. That's months. part of your remuneration for your salary. That's that's it. Plus the open houses and the ceremonial things. Yeah, they're, they're, exactly. They're, not, they're yeah. part of you being a. <clears throat> I think may I bridge yeah, to that question sense. previously that was a bit of a gray area under this new policy that would not be a gray area exactly okay Take on. yeah because okay. we didn't have that really mapped out well in the old policy that's really I certainly see where everybody's going through with with some of that but uh, as a counselor sometimes you you're expected to be there you expect to be at a at an opening you're hope to be there uh, they want you to be there. The people that are having this, the special ceremony and the special opening are wanting you to be there. And some people are giving up their time. Uh, places they could have been, uh, maybe uh, jobs that where they could have been making money uh, at, uh, for their family and for whatever they're doing. And so to, to say that it's, it's something evil by somebody uh, putting in for uh, an event like that outside their per diem, I'm, I don't necessarily see that. I, I um, maybe with this raise in salary that makes a difference up on, on something like that. I understand that now, but mm -hmm. I think that's a lot of the reason why I would put in for for something like that is because I feel it's taken up my time. I, I, I feel that if it was a grand opening like coming up this weekend and. Uh, I gave up my Saturday to, to be somewhere, to be at that grand opening, because I feel that that, that, that we're helping that community, we're helping the business. If I wasn't a counselor, maybe I wouldn't have attended. But being a counselor, I feel obligated that I should be there to, to try and economically move that, uh, that group along or, or the business. That's but my yet, opinion. That's, as, as a counselor, it's, it's part of your duties to attend official that's exactly what I'm saying. Exactly. 
you know, yes, the, right. the, it's in the base salary because it's well, I didn't see, and and my, my thoughts my thoughts are it isn't in your base salary if it's going to take away from your, your from outside of what I'm agreeing with uh, Councillor Faulkner in the fact that your base salary is for a lot of what you do in council. Maybe that's not the case, that, and it's all. I guess that's open for opinion. That's all, and that's why I'm, my opinion on something like that. Okay. That's who you, uh, Mayor Bridge. So what you're saying is then you expect to be paid to go to grand openings. I and, didn't say uh, that. I said, I said we could get. I, I don't. I'm saying it's not a bad thing. I'm saying it's not evil thing. I, I see we're kind of putting, putting something into. Uh, People are being bad and they're trying to grab for money. You know, I don't think that's the case at all. I don't. So, so what? what saying so, then? I don't. Well, what are we saying then? So what then with this change? What what are you doing then with the grand opening? What will I do? Yeah. That'll be my opinion when I get there. It'll depend. I'll decide what I'm going to do at the time. Even if the policy says that you're expected to be there. If the policy says I expect to be there. Yes, that's part of being a counselor. Right now, I'd have to follow the policy that's in foot in front of us. That's what I'd have to do. Correct? Yeah. Right now, that policy isn't there. Yeah, that's right. It's that's not there so, now. So, what I'm saying, that. if the policy was put in front of me, I certainly would agree with that. If that's, that's the case with the council. Exactly. And, I, and I believe that yeah. mm -hmm. um, Bill has brought that forward, saying that, you know, we're going to increase your, your salary per diem to cover that kind of mm -hmm. thing, so to cover your time. Right. That's what I'm saying. Right. I'm saying that extra does cover that. So it's not a bad thing that we're raising that salary. Well, and, and I think that's the point I think Bill was trying to make. We're raising the salary, but at the same time, we're re-clarifying some of the yep. per yep. diems. So exactly. it may not be the 34% increase is what you're talking about, because right. in the end of the I day. I think at the end, it'll be all the yeah. It's and a budget. I, and it, it's an incentive for us to get out there and, and uh, yeah. partake in that. So <clears throat> I. So where are we on I this? I would probably story? attend, but. Yeah, did we get the two? I think, I, I, if I may, Mayor Bridge, you've had good debate on number two, but I, I'm suggesting it's probably going to come back to you relatively the same. Okay. And then, and number three is whether you feel the per diems are are acceptable for for the next term as well. I don't see change in those. Yeah. What do you say that's not a whole per diems at one fifty and eighty five dollars a meeting for four hours. Fifty dollars for a council meeting. But no payment for chairing a meeting. You weren't claiming it anyway. No. Yeah. The number four on the cost of living would be, um, if council approved one by resolution for staff, it would include increase the council one as well. So you did not do a cost of living increase this year, but if you did approve one next year, it would be clear. Unless you said in the resolution, we're increasing staff, but we're not increasing council. We'd have that automatically option. Automatically increase, but you would have that that council, the new council would have that option. It would be based on a report that we bring to you in the late fall that says the cost of living in October was whatever. If you're going to increase, here's what the amount would be. And we would put that in the budget, but you would need to be, do a resolution and open council as to whether or not you were going to do that. And I think in that survey bill, the majority of the councils do it that way, right? Uh, certainly some of them do. I didn't count. Okay. It's not uncommon, let's put it that way. Because yeah, I, I think when talking to some of the lower tiers that I know, they all have that in there. Is that one generally good? Number five was uh, eliminating the $25 telephone charge and increasing the daily meal amount to $80. The phone one was never used, you're saying, Bill, anyways, right? So phone one was not. Same as the chair, <coughs> eliminated. Okay. <laughs> hmm? Yep. Oh, sorry. To be usually in collective bargaining agreements and uh, labor agreements and whatnot, that when there's a per diem like that, as opposed to putting in a receipt for each meal, um, that uh, if you're away out of town, uh, that that uh, your per diem. You get the eighty dollars for your meals, and if you go over, that's your business. <coughs> and uh, uh, with receipts, sometimes is a difficulty <coughs> in respect to them. Yes, I have get one at Tim Hortons. Oh. Um, I mean, that's a good point. We kind of talked about that before. Most of you uh, 
Um, and, and the issue is, well, then sometimes meals are supplied and sometimes they're not. So yeah, that's, right. that's why most of you do put in receipts just to show that you did exceed yeah. the amount. Mm -hmm. And uh, so <laughs> you raise a good point. Um, I personally like to put my receipt in there okay. just so someone can see I it. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, just, just to comment on that, I, I had that changed a few years ago, a number of years ago because we used to get paid $75, everybody just got $75, and some people were bringing an apple and a sandwich to the conferences, and that's what I didn't think was right. I stopped you doing that. <laughs> the peanut butter, I don't eat so many peanut butter sandwiches, my friend. So anyway, that, that's, where that, that's, where, that's where that where that came from, okay. Ron, so. Okay, no, that's cool. It's always chicken nuggets. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, number six then is permitting members of council to participate on provincial boards and to attend that annual conference in addition to the two conventions and then also was the issue of whether the mayor ought to have eight. <laughs> we could maybe put that down to five pretty easily. Yeah. I or just leave it. Yeah. I can bring it back with no amount in there and you can go to whatever you can within your budget. I was just going to say I'd rather see the a budget. budget thing. Yeah. And the county sends them. Yep. I'd rather see the budget. Through you, Mayor Bridge. So, uh, the budget for attending conferences, does that include if you're on a, another board or is that separate from being on the other board, other board or other group or whatever? Is, is your, your conference budget, is it regardless of where you sit and how many conferences you attend? That, 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 if, if, if I may, through you, Mayor Bridge, if you wanted to be bring, have a policy for the next council like that, we could word it like that now it's not like that mm -hmm. currently but yeah i that there's probably some i think it would be appropriate to have it like that so we probably need to have some figures as to what the the average cost is yeah. before we set that budget or whoever sets the next budget yes yeah. and, and through you or your worship I, I think if you're sitting on a separate board terry like you know you get your two conferences here because there are two like amo i think is a very good conference that everybody should go to and then there's usually a couple other, possibly one more that you should go to. And if you're sitting on another board, I don't think you should be restricted just to those two conferences if you're not sitting on another board when there are other meetings. So I don't know if you want to put a limit on two other conferences on the other board or <coughs> one conference, um, like you said, but you have to bring that back, so. Your, if I may, your, just to, your mileage is claimed separate and you get paid for the days you're there as well. But typically, your registration is about seven or eight hundred dollars, and your accommodations about it's four four nights. It's eight hundred dollars. So you're looking at eight sixteen hundred dollars to attend and stay. And then you put your meals on top of that. So that that's comes up to your. So there are between eighteen hundred and two thousand plus if your per diem and your so. mileage. So yeah. we, the thirty five hundred was r roughly two conferences. Oh. And we seem to be That's pretty close. That's why I said budget-wise, we seem pretty close with those two. But aren't we contradicting ourselves if we're saying in number six that we're allowing the person to go to two plus the provincial, but yet we're sticking them with the same budget? Right. No. Oh, yeah, I understand what you're saying. So what I would suggest so is that you just, there's no, you just, you don't even have to put two or five or anything. You just yeah, attend as budget. your budget permits. Yeah. But and if, if somebody ends up, see. On a board, you could increase the budget. Yeah, and when somebody is asked to go on a board, they, most boards, like uh, Roma or any of those ones, you have to get a council resolution from your council before you can even put your name up. Thank so you. at that point in time, you would say, what is the extra cost for that person? Because <coughs> it's a one-year term or a two-year term, then you could build that into your budget. So that, in my mind, that would be over and above that person's normal budget. Thank you. Okay, but then I eliminate this, you know, how many conferences, because again, if you could, you yeah. might end up going to a couple smaller events that you need to go to because in your mind you think that's a good educational event. And as long as you're within that budget, yeah. why do we have to have one or two or three or what, what is the magic number? We, you know, the whole bottom line is, in my mind, is the total dollars that we spend as a council and how many dollars that is and do we feel comfortable that we're spending a reasonable amount of dollars in order to govern the town? And, and, and you know, I, I totally believe in educational things to make sure that we get the skill sets we need as a council 
And I wouldn't want to hold people back from trying to get skill sets if that's what it is. And, and, and that, that's why I think there has to be a dollar amount. I like the dollar amount rather than the numbers. Yeah. Through you, Mr. Mayor, if, and I agree with that concept. If that's the case, then I would suggest that we raise that figure from $3,500 to 5000 or, or at least have some information. Back exactly. We're we'll waiting till yeah, the information I, like this is, comes again, back. Again, we're not approving it tonight. Right. But Bill could go back and kind of build, work out some numbers, historically where we've been, so that we know if if it's AMO and and uh, good roads, those are the two you go to, or if it's uh, recreation or it's awesome or whatever that you want to go to. We, we, they all have a, a probably a fairly close ability to come up with the numbers. Oh, it depends where it is sometimes because your mileage yeah. gets wiped out. Mayor Bridge, I'm, I'm happy to do that, but I just should say that that amount's there now, so the new council will set its budget. Exactly. So okay. Yeah. Well, really see, this, is what, this is what we deal with now. The guy. Right. That's it I now. So what I'm suggesting, uh, hearing from you, is that we take that out of the policy for the next council. So they'll deal with their budget and set it, and there's no, you can go to one or you can go to three. You just stay within whatever your budget is at the time and uh, correct me if I'm wrong Bill like th this is this is one figure for all seven of us correct <coughs> it's 3500 for um, like I'm, I'm just counselor saying, it's 4800 for the deputy mayor and it's 5000 for the like I'm just saying like George won't use five um, not all the time and and I won't use any this year and I only used one last year mm -hmm. so like I'm saying if you're budgeting that does that is that a surplus then in yeah, what happens is when, when that happens and, and, and someone's over, they tend to offset and we stay, you stay well, as a group with them. if somebody yeah. decides that they want to go to a third one and they need to go. Mm -hmm. Then you have approved that and that's what you did for Council Elliott before. So I'm going to come back then with something that says doesn't have limits in it anymore and that you just stay within your budget as far as number of events. And then the final thing is eliminating restrictions. Well, the second to final thing is eliminating restriction on spousal attendance. What it says now is they can attend half the meetings allocated. I, I, I certainly encourage people, if they can, to bring their spouse to these meetings. What we don't do is pay for banquet tickets and things like that. That's not been something we've traditionally covered. So anyone who wants to go to banquets, that's on their own, at their own cost. And the, and, and the, the meal allowance is the same. The meal allowance your, is the same. Own. Right. So you're not, you pay for your own spouse. Right. And the last thing is that uh, uh, you may need a motion, you should have a motion on this, and that pertains to Councillor Elliott's uh, attendance at AMO. Also move. Second by Second. Rick. All in favor? Okay. Mayor Bridge, if I could, so was there anything I missed in there <coughs> as far as bringing stuff back? Yes. I hate to belabor and harp on it, but... Uh, just <laughs> one thing, I, I wouldn't mind, we always show that, that I'm probably one of the, the highest all the time, if not the highest, if I am the highest. I wouldn't mind seeing percentages of attendance beside the, the expenses when they're shown. Can we do that too? Number of meetings attended, or or percentage? Oh, you mean you went to fifty percent of the meeting council meetings, percent of or? council meetings, or something? Can we do that, or, or does everybody think that's? I, I can certainly give you that figure. Well, and you know what? I don't, I don't think, think that's. Good. No, you know what? When I was uh, <coughs> deep in the economic development early on in council, I well, my my pay probably would have been the, one of the higher ones too, and when people see that number, and you know, an extra five thousand or whatever it was. It, it, I'm sure they wondered what I was doing for that extra, and then there's no explanation of what I was doing. And you know, I'm spending time down in Toronto with the Ministry of Economic Development, and then going down uh, talking to different plant people and stuff like that. I, th I think it would be good for the public to know what if, if you if you have an extra fifteen thousand dollars in expenses. I think the public should know that why you have that uh, extra fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars. I was glad that you brought forth the, the awesome thing because that gives me. Uh, a chance to explain where my extra dollars were coming from and but if, if somebody in the future wanted to be be involved in something that was their costs would go up in, in per diems and such like then uh, for example a board board thing uh, it probably wouldn't be a bad thing if a, I, I'm not trying to 
one against the other. I don't know how you do that. So that <laughs> well, I'll just give, Gam will give you, uh, if you're, yours included, 3,500 being directed to Olson. So Gam will head that in there. Okay. Okay. Maybe that's fine. You know, I mean, I, I you know, it, it, we, we talked about that at the county level too, and we have Joanne Rasui, and Joanne is, is very active in FCM now, and she's the, the on the board. She's on the board. Not only that, she's the caucus, the Ontario caucus chair. Uh, and her expenses, and, and with FCM, it's really hard because you never know. It depends. Sometimes they have more meetings in Ontario and they have less out west. If you had two meetings in Vancouver and one in Halifax, you're, you know, all of a sudden you're $15,000. And so we have the same concern there at the county level. And we're trying to come around with, it's not like we're trying to hide anything. We're just trying to say, like, if it's, it's, it's over and above what she's doing on other things and she's bringing value back to, yes. to a group. And I think how that's, it, it's still numbers. It still has to be there to show that that's the overall. But I like the fact that it is, like in Campbell's situation, you had marked it out, right? So that's there and that's extra and whatever. So okay. it doesn't mean that you, you didn't get that much. I, but yeah. again, the other thing is expenses. I think people tend to forget that expenses are things that you didn't have to pay for fine but it's not in your pocket, it's not salary. There's that's a difference between salary and expenses. But I think, you know, that's part of what it's all about. And I think from a public standpoint, I think they, they want to make sure that you're not blowing your expenses to, you know, getting the $16 orange juices and the <coughs> things like that. But if you're doing something worthwhile and you're getting some, something back from it, then it's worthwhile to do it. But it's not money that's going in your pocket. Uh, that's, just, that's just it, Your Your Worship. You know what, $150 for a day? You're away from your home, your family for 24 hours, and you're getting paid 150 dollars. I really don't think we're getting overpaid on that end of it. So and we should be consultants. <laughs> <laughs> and you're taking your. No, uh, we'd all be broke. Oh, exactly. Yeah. No, they would be able to afford to have our houses. Right. Taxes would be too high. Just uh, through you, Mayor Bridge, I'm wondering, would it be possible to get that report bill that uh, Senator Wellington did? Is that public information or? Uh, I, I can supply it to you. I don't know whether they distributed it around or not. I. I don't I they, they gave me a copy. They gave the CAOs a copy at a meeting we had, so I can provide a copy to you. I, I don't know whether they shared it with everybody or, or not. Be bigger print. <laughs> it's pretty small. I had a hard time, but <laughs> more pages around to you. <laughs> more pages. I believe. I would it. prefer, uh, in terms of media or whatever, if they wanted to ask Senator Wellington for it, since it's their work. I, That's just I didn't. I didn't. I summarized it. And, I don't know whether they had the whole thing at their council meeting or not. So. As well, it's very, very extensive. And I can supply it to you. Thank, thank you, Mayor Bridge. I know that's a difficult topic, but I'll bring something back for you to approve for the next council at the next council meeting. All right. And moving on. Moving on up. And oh, we have, I'm moving it over to Councillor Caldwell, the city chair. All right, more money talk. Light it up. <laughs> I think this is easier talk. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, uh, Treasurer Duff has joined us, and I would ask him first of all to talk about the approval of the accounts for okay. tonight. <laughs> Great. Um, actually, this is a fairly routine one. Um, the admin expense of 292 of that. Uh, about a hundred two hundred and ten thousand is uh, for debt payment so that's by far the biggest thing uh, this year another twelve thousand mm -hmm. dollars in cleaning up trees and getting lots of email messages tonight and that's what our public works staff are doing at the oh, yeah. <laughs> at yeah. the, at this yeah, moment we're probably going to have them more of that don't yeah I think so anyway um <laughs> yes. got some pipe for fifteen thousand and the regular sewer to center Wellington for twenty two. So those are uh, just the highlights. Not too much in the way of capital as you'll see, but there's a lot of tenders closing in the next couple of weeks. So okay, has anyone got any questions? Then the recommendation is the Council of the Town of Minto receives the Treasurer's report dated June 9, 2014 regarding approval of accounts and approves the Town of Minto accounts by department for June 2014. Move by Councillor Faulkner, second by Mayor Bridge. All in favor? And I would ask Gord then to please uh, update us on the town of Minto developed using LAS energy planning tool. 
Okay, so this is our mandatory energy conservation and demand management plan, <laughs> which although you have it in front of you, it's still a bit of a work in progress. We've been working with LAS, which I think pretty much all of you have been to various seminars and webinars, Jeff Hart, Barton. Um, they're basically kind of in the middle. Really, this is a regulation under the Ministry of Energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just had a webinar um, June 11th, it was only a few days ago, kind of updating it. So we obtained about three or four different sample plans. And actually, Bill took a lot of the, uh, I guess, the format and put it into a narrative. I'm going to put in appendices. I already have. Um, by facility for 2011, 12, and 13 of all the <coughs> uh, kilowatt hours used, the cubic meters or liters. Uh, what is unique, again, about this plan is what we have to report on to the ministry is 2012. So we, we've got information right up to last month, but I did ask that very question, and no, it's just 2012. Um, so anyway, I've, I've got that all entered there. Um, there's one button that you press and it says finalize and once you've done that you're you're committed so <laughs> I just, I just want to check it over a couple more times it's technically not due for about three weeks <coughs> and uh, you know maybe we'll put some uh, graphs or that I'm also working with our director of facilities and hopefully uh, Wayne Metzger too just to you know put a few things because we've done a lot mm -hmm. um, primarily through that save on energy, like we've replaced all the T12s with T8s, these exit signs, they were bulbs, they're LED, we're doing that feasibility study on the cogen, I just got something late this afternoon on the street lighting with revised figures. Um, we've done some other things like to do with the way we operate our uh, compressors and things like that. So if I can get a little bit more on those more detailed plans, I'm gonna add that in too. And if not, well, I'll get her sent in and question asked, is there any extension to July 1st? No, so it's still a due date of July 1st. So anyway, this is our attempt and, and we tried to uh, tie it into a lot of our strategic plan initiatives, our integrated community sustainability plan initiative too. So um, I, I think we're uh, still gonna be bound by this and Again, probably nobody's gonna go over it in great detail, but in the future they'll say, have you done anything? Have you done your plan? And at least this way we'll have it filed, so. Gord's ahead of you. Yeah. You're ahead again, oh. Gord. you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Chair Caldwell, that, on, on page two, uh, Gord, uh, how do we uh, explain the, the uh, gas emissions, the uh, estimated uh, greenhouse gas emissions, uh, usually with our improvements and, and work, and it, got it worse. would decrease, and it got worse. I well, actually, it didn't from well, 2011 yeah. was the worst. Yeah. I, yeah, I saw that too, and, and I don't have a, a technical answer. Okay. All I can think of is the 2012 was a very mild winter. It sure was. And I guess the offset, like <laughs> 2013, like 2014 is not going to be great either, but... No. 2013, I guess, was so bad that it offset our uh, our other advantages. Okay. And yeah, and I just wondered if there was an, an answer for that. Yeah, and if you, you see down below, it's not the electricity that's gone bad; it's the natural gas natural and the gas. propane. Yeah. Yeah. So I think yeah, we saved a little bit in electricity and we spent it on heat, and yeah. the greenhouse gases was retrograde, not an yeah, improvement. Good, thank yeah. you. Yeah, I was a could be it's all on council down. hot air. Could it be? <laughs> <laughs> could be. <laughs> uh, through you, uh, Chairman Caldwell, um, just where where do we stand with our uh, replacement of our lighting project? See, in, I got uh, something uh, about four o'clock this afternoon, and they've got a newly revised um, plan, and uh, I can say it's good news. The savings are going to be slightly bigger. They we kind of did a they calling it a desktop back in the winter. And they've done two field surveys, so they've incorporated all the field survey work. And uh, it's going to look a little better than what we initially thought. So uh, I say I just got that real late this afternoon. And then we still have to sign a contract and all that, too. Mm -hmm. So actually, I can uh, 
uh, email it out to you if you like to. It's got a lot of stuff about the type of fixtures and all that. But. That, that report would come with an agreement that you have yeah. to... You know, we, we really haven't approved anything no. yet, have we? No, we had a letter of intent and then this study that Gordon's Shame. referring to had to come back and identify the exact amount. So I'm just hurting now that it came we in at four. We just so got it literally a few hours ago. So, <laughs> yeah. So you will need to see that and then there will be an agreement. Yeah. Thanks, Chairman Mr. Caldwell, thank you. Through you to, to our treasurer, two things. Where sure. are we in reference to the cogen uh, study? The co and the second thing, um, go ahead and answer that. Sure. Cogen, they asked for some more information maybe about six weeks ago. We supplied that and kind of the ball's in their court to, to get back to us on that one. Second thing with the, uh, with the majority government, <laughs> how long will it take? before we see any changes in energy? In energy? Well, for one thing, we do have to submit this plan. Okay. <laughs> That's for so sure. Did you uh, and I would, I would anticipate the Green Energy Act is here to stay and hopefully we'll get some more sensible rules on the whole solar because we've really tried to be uh, progressive on that. We've done fine in the microfit, but we've been very frustrated on the fit program for sure. Can't answer. Something for Emo, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are there any other questions? Hey, there's not a recommendation. Is the recommendation to receive the report? Uh, there's one, uh, yeah, there's a resolution. There's a resolution, uh, um, oh, Chair okay. Caldwell, page in the three. middle of page three. If I could, or I could read it, or? Yes, please. That Council of the Town of Minto received the draft Minto Energy Conservation and Demand Management Plan and that upon completion said plan is submitted to the Ministry of Environment to fulfill the requirements of Regulation 397-11 under the Green Energy Act. And further, that Minto Council supports local energy planning as a means to improve fiscal accountability through savings and cost avoidance, ensure wise use of resources, support local industry, reduce the impact of operations on the environment, demonstrate leadership in energy management, continue to demonstrate sound operating and maintenance practices to complement ener the energy efficiencies implemented through the new, through the capital asset renewal program and provide for discussion at all corporate levels to explore new ideas and trends. Okay, may I have someone move that motion please? Councillor Hemley, seconded by Deputy Mayor Fisk. All in favor? Move fast. And I turn the chair back to okay. Mayor Bridge. Thank, Thank you, you. Uh, Councillor Caldwell. I'll turn it back Thank over to Painless. Thanks, Gordon. Councillor Turton. Thank you very much, uh, <coughs> Mayor Bridge. As everybody knows, our um, <coughs> our public works guys and gals, uh, Mike and the rest of the crew, are out tonight uh, looking after our community. We did have a uh, few trees down, according to Brian, and they're cleaning them up. So. Everybody has had a chance to read this report, uh, this Municipal Cemeteries report. And I would assume that uh, if there is questions, and I know uh, this is the first time that uh, Mike has done anything like this, and his question to me was, I'm not sure if I've asked, if I'd answered, if I have answered everyone's questions. So, pardon me? All mine are answered, that's good. So if there is questions, um, I would suggest that we channel them through to Mike. Everybody has his mm -hmm. email address. Yep. <coughs> and I don't think that we've heard the last of this. I, I, I think that there's still some questions. Uh, in policy, I would believe, I would agree with that. So if there's no questions, just yeah, go ahead. Through Council. Chair Turton. Okay. Um, and and uh, it was reported in the in the press, I believe, the Wellington Advertiser, uh, the issue on the cemeteries, and uh, uh, our uh, I, the message relayed to me was that there was kind of a uh, misunderstanding of the message that was made when it was brought up. I made it very clear that uh, that was no in no way. Uh, um, a criticism of our staff and, and the efforts. And I just want to add one person that was no uh, criticism of our uh, 
contract the uh, on the the job that uh, they're doing and cutting the grass. So I just want to make that clear. Good, because it was kind of there was a perception taken from the article that that we weren't criticizing our staff, but we might have been criticizing our contractee. And and I want to make that clear that that in fact was not the case. I did talk with our contractor today and, and she is uh, ecstatic, first of all, that she got the job and she's trying to really work hard she sure uh, is. with our staff and understand the job. That's the first thing for her to understand exactly what uh, our staff expect of her. But she is happy. She's working with our people and uh, I would think likely uh, it'll be all good at the end of the day. Uh, Mayor Bridge. Yeah, I think I, I think I wasn't here the last meeting, but I think the learning curve is, is hard when you've got a new contractor and you're just starting, especially cemeteries, because they're so difficult to cut and to get it around and just to get a feel for it. I mean, I, I, it takes a while. And we had, I seem to recall when we had our previous contractor, the first little while that he was on board, or they were on board, we had, a little, we had some concerns because we had gone from one thing to another. So I think give us some time and hopefully we the weather holds and we can get caught up on the work. Any other questions? Just just to comment, I was there on the weekend in Hairston and um, mom and dad's grave site looked great and I, I looked around the cemetery because it was obviously in our minds and and the lawns were cut really well and I, I really didn't take notice until sometimes they got to go in between like that and the next time it's like that. And so. And it looks like the guys have taken some fresh uh, soil and, uh, and spread it in places that needed. And, uh, so it looks like they're working hard to get to, to where it was. It looked great. So. Yeah, I visited all three cemeteries <coughs> as well. And, and, you know, in talking with uh, uh, Mike, there's, work, there's more work to be done. Um, one of the issues that we talked about was some of the large uh, trees that are planted 20 years ago right beside the headstones and now you can't even see the headstone. Um, I think what he would like to see happen is how do you deal with that? Uh, it's the, the same thing. The family planted it, Hound. Pardon me? Especially if the family had planted it. Yeah. Right and it's it's they're just growing out of control. Honestly. Yeah they were very small at one time right <laughs> yeah. and now they're out of control and and they're you know they're pushing possibly some of the headstones over and and so that is one item that might come up. That is what Elaine said too. It's strange when you walk through that uh, trees are out of control of some yeah. of the older. <clears throat> Anyways, this is a good start, and I know Mike did some homework on this, and, and it's good. So the recommendation that the council receive this public works report from the road foreman dated June 17, 2014, regarding the municipal cemeteries as information. Thank you, Councillor Faulkner, Councillor Elliott. All in favor of this report? Against? That's carried. One other item, uh, Baron Bridge, uh, that I was going to bring up as, uh, as well, we're on we're on other other oh, additional okay. items okay. now. If you want to do it, then, <laughs> or right. do you want Thank to do you. it as a chair? Uh, it doesn't matter. Well, you can do it. As a chair uh, I think you it's. Uh, I'll, I'll do it as a chair. Okay. I have a uh, a letter here from um, our uh, friend Daryl Bueller. We it's a report from uh, the last audit, and we have. I'll just read it to you. And, and I feel that I've kind of let Daryl down as Chair of Public Works and DWQMS uh, team member. Hi, Councillor Turton. And I'm not sure if he wants me to read this out, but I'm going to anyways, because it's a genuine concern of our uh, DWQMS uh, chairman. Mm -hmm. The weakness that, that has been put forward in our investigation uh, is the weakness identified is in our last internal audit was the, doc uh, the documentation of information being passed to the owners, which is us, of the water systems regarding performance and other issues. With this in mind, Daryl is asking me to pass this on to Council, the outcomes of our MOE inspection of all four water systems. The inspections were focused in uh, inspections, although the inspections involved fewer activities than those normally undertaken by the details ins inspection. It contained most of the elements required to assess key compliance issues. Our systems were chosen for focused inspections during this inspection cycle because 
inspection findings over the past three years were such that the number of violations were minimal or non-existent. There were few or no orders issued that were of significance in the maintenance of the water potability and there were no deficiency as defined in Regulation 17203. All four systems scored 100% compliance. This score is a reflection of the hard work our operators do to provide safe quality water to our customers. Please see the attached and the breakdown of the inspection modules. I can make the full report available on request. As information develops in the operation of our water systems, our QMS rep will attempt to keep you and council informed of the imp info applicable to the happenings of our systems. As you pass on update, updates to council, we're the owners, and he makes that very clear, of our systems, would you please ensure that the updates are recorded by the recording secretary in the meeting minutes? If you or anyone else has suggestions on how to ensure this requirement is being dealt with, please let me know. In the past, this info would be passed on during annual management review reports at the end of the year, rather than give the info all at once. This process should make more friendlier to those receiving the info. As always, thank you for your support. So. The weakness here is me clearly bringing it to council and Daryl getting information back that I did bring it to council. Okay, so I want to make it clear and, and I, I think what we need to do is make sure that Daryl gets a document back if I understand what he's saying and I know that we've had discussions because I know these guys need the information and so and hopefully Daryl's not upset at me for because he sends me emails quite often and I try to bring it up. Sometimes I don't, but yeah, I guess and if there was a problem, we'd be first to know, but that's not the way Daryl wants it done and, and I agree with Daryl. Mr. Chair, if yeah. I could, um, the way I've seen that done in the past is the public works director to give a fairly regular report on them, verbal or even briefly in writing. Mm -hmm. What I might recommend here in this case is that we council do a, a resolution receiving the verbal report on the water inspection on water inspections and that be recorded in the minutes and that we would uh, make that available to Mr. Bueller and the director and that in the future we have a regular report from the in, under the public works director on the on the inspections. The reports are uh, pretty technical in nature so I think you could just say that we had inspections on this day all systems were looked at we scored a hundred percent and there were no issues that needed to be addressed but at least then that comes forward on a regular basis because I I think I feel like staff should bring that forward it shouldn't be something that you would have to remember but okay well that, that, that's fine but um, I just want to make sure that uh, Daryl understands that uh, we appreciate the work that they're doing mm -hmm. And for us, for us to get it 100% on all four, uh, and and the deficiency is um, him not getting a report from the owners to say that they're aware of that. So, hmm. I'll pass the chair back to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Could we have a motion? Sure. Yes. Can receive? we have a motion of that to that sure. effect? Uh, sure. Councillor Elliott, Councillor Faulkner. Everybody understand the motion. All in favor of the motion. Errors. Against. That's carried. Thank you. Oh, great, great to me, 100%. Uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's amazing. Uh, additional items. Now, I've got a list here, so I could start at this end. Ron. <laughs> this Ron? This Ron first, and then Ron. Okay, you're going, Ron. My, my, my one turned into a couple, maybe three. Oh. <laughs> Just quick. Uh, Palmerston party at the park. Great, great show. A uh, lot of local talent. Um, a lot of positives. We ran it the right way, uh, and it's going to happen again. And we're hoping it's going to be a really big event for the town of Minnow. And, and everybody that was there was really excited about it. Uh, Mr. Mayor was there in his cowboy hat, <laughs> pretty dapper. Didn't ride a horse, though. No, no. <laughs> uh, my was wife really, wasn't really happy good. I had my cowboy hat on. She didn't like that I, cowboy hat. There was. There was some, some sort of thought out there, and I think it got out in uh, the social media that, that it wasn't the local people running the event, and now that we've got it run and everything, we're, we're pretty excited. 
we hear from a lot of people they were sorry they missed it and people in the community said gee i didn't even know what was happening so we're going to try and uh, get that improved a bit and we're having a meeting next week to uh, set up for next year and find out where we're going next uh, splash bash that the annual lions put on every year is uh saturday and uh the town graciously opens up the pool and gives that free to any kids that attend and the splash pad is working the boys worked really hard to get it going i think they may have even solved the problem with it so i mean it was it was so much on and off for the last year that i, th I think they figured out technically i can't tell you what it was but they've got it figured out and they should have it operating really good this year uh mr mayor gives out hot dogs and hamburgers to everybody he did that last year and he's doing it again this year so uh, uh all the kids that attend or anybody that attends uh, comes up to our barbecue and that's a, it's supplied by uh our mayor so which is how he gets involved in it so it's a really exciting thing for the community it's all free for anybody that attends there's nothing that we charge for and uh if you want to bring your kids, it's basically based around kids in a lot of ways. We have uh, the fire departments there, and they spray water, and we have water and everything. Water slides so, and yeah, all. It's, all, it's a great, crazy, great it's event. Crazy. A lot of people attend, and then uh, farmers markets happening, and then everybody goes back and forth. It's a great thing. I think that's it. Thanks. Well, I'm just going to continue to be a monkey until I get an increase in my weight. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> um, we have had a substantial change in uh, uh, staff uh, for the uh, Wellington uh, uh, health team. Um, we have welcomed Dr. Doyen Oyelowo, and uh, you can say that. just That's to great. report uh, that uh, she has now hired a full-time RN to be with her at the uh, office, so that's going to uh, increase her uh, abilities to serve patients. We welcome uh, Dr. Philip Deacon, uh, who has, is taking over uh, Dr. Donald's practice. He has not uh, got his CPSO, which is College of Physicians endorsement. Um, he starts, uh, it's on their agenda on the 19th, so this Thursday. So hopefully uh, by July the 1st, he will be able to uh, practice full independent. Uh, right now he has to uh, operate. And then we have um, uh, two Dr. Sutherlands. There's a Dr. Sutherland from uh, uh, Fergus uh, 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 is doing emergency room uh, detail or uh, duties at Palmerston until Dr. Uh, Deacon uh, gets fully approved. And uh, we have Dr. Emily Sutherland from Guelph who is going to be a do in the local for Dr. Cressy, who is going to Australia this September, and also for maternity leave for Dr. Doyen Yellow. Yes. And I understand I, the report was today that this is the year of mat leave, and I understand both um, uh, lady, well, one's a physician, I'm not sure the other isn't a nurse practitioner or whatnot, but anyways, uh, both at Clifford, uh, or in the family way, so maybe it's something Pam? in the water up. Uh, did they sit Pam. in economic yeah. development? Congratulations. <laughs> so, anyways, that's my re economic development chair. That's the report okay. from the doctor yep. recruitment. Thank you. And, Mary Lou, did you have one? No, I, I don't know. have one. And Dave, did you no, have one? Yes. yes. <laughs> Let everybody know now. Congratulations. Pam. Very good. Yep. I didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> proud grandpa of a seven pound 14 oh, year old. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Big old dog, big old hound. That way you, that's where you're late. Just right? happened. Yeah, that's what I was. Well, I, uh, that's a good reason. <laughs> yep. That's exciting. Just happened though. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on July the 15th, uh, Trees for Minto Committee is having a um, barbecue open house uh, presentation at uh, Steckley Farm. It would be nice to have the full council in attendance. It's uh, a major undertaking and. Um, we're going to try and uh, July, 15th. July 15th. July 15th. It's a little early, but I thought I'd get you thinking yeah. about it and get it in your calendars. Yeah. Um, we want the we want the community to be as well informed as possible, and this is how we're going to 
start uh, providing that information. Uh, second thing is I had a rate payer in today and she brought to my attention about the fireman's uh, cairn in the park behind the Hairston Fire Hall. Uh, she feels that it's it it should be somewhere where it's it's more um, visible visible and accessible, and so I don't know who should be uh, addressing that, but I think we should maybe give it some consideration. I did I did make uh, go down and have a look at it, and to be honest with you, it's the first time I've been down there. I didn't even realize that little park existed, but um, we do have a nice fire hall there. I don't know if it could sit in front of the fire hall. She mentioned perhaps Tannery Park, but there's there has to be a better place, I think, where that, that can be made more visible. So, And then she also mentioned the horse manure <laughs> issue. Um, when we were at the mayor's breakfast, it was brought up by um, one of the... Um, yeah, no, uh, Leonard. Leonard, sorry. One of the uh, storekeepers there. Um, you know, I have... He, he was quite upset or quite adamant about it, but... You know, part of it he has to keep in mind is they're coming to town to shop in his store. But I, I guess it doesn't make it right that uh, there's manure. Now, I, I have never seen a major issue with manure, but um, she claims there's areas where there's a fair bit of it accumulating. So uh, we do now have a garden, so maybe we could start a compost with the <laughs> horse manure. We do have composters down there. Yeah. Yep, so sure. I, I don't know whose responsibility that is or what, what we can do about it, but... Um, it's been mentioned twice now, so it's a, it's obviously an issue out there. Okay. Okay, I just have a couple of things. Um, one, uh, we have the concert in the park series is starting, and, and the first one is going to be in Palmerston on July the 6th, and it's going to be at the uh, uh, railway station, and it's a Sunday, and there'll be more stuff coming out on that, so I'll let everybody know. But that's good, and the next one I think is on the... <laughs> 20th, and that'll be in uh, at the st at the railway station in Harriston, and the Middle Arts Council is doing that one, and Rotary Club one is August the 17th, and and they're looking forward to doing theirs up there. August 17th. August 17th. Um, so there'll be more out on all those. Yeah, well, it could be Amo, is it? Oh, there you go. Um, anyways, there's there's a lot of that that great stuff happening. Um, there's also a webinar, uh, the one that we went down to Memphis uh, is actually, if you want to go to launch it on uh, Thursday, you can watch the webinar that uh, Yana is going to do for the uh, province of Ontario. Uh, our presentation down there went really well. In mm -hmm. fact, we have no, uh, the uh, province of Nova Scotia wanted to look at it as well and do some stuff with us. Uh, and it just goes to prove, and I, I said it at the launch it opening, we take it for granted how it works here that we have the chamber gets along with the town the that we have lots of volunteer groups and and all the things that two tiers work together as far as you know bringing that twenty five thousand down from the upper tier for business development and for the b and &E. I just take those things for granted now because we've been doing them so well for so long but when you get to one of these conferences and you start talking about it everybody looks at you like you have two heads <laughs> and they look at you and say, that can't happen. The chambers don't get along with the town. We, you know, we don't get along with the city or the, or the, uh, the state and all the other stuff. So we can be uh, really thankful that that's sort of where we are at uh, in the town of Mindo and the county of Wellington. So we are just amazing people here. We are amazing people. Amazing people. Rick. people. Rick. Did you get that the press? Yeah. Number one. <laughs> and I just I want to say right now, because I missed this when, when we did the soft lunch, and I did say it, and Rick wasn't there to hear it, but... Uh, our, our launch and our incubator is up and running and, and Rick had a great, uh, he was one of the founding fathers of that. Him and Belinda put a lot of effort and a lot of miles on. Gordon. And Gord as well. Gordon. And uh, But I forgot to t mention that that night. I, I feel bad because you should have had a little bit of uh, sunshine that night. Anyways, thank you Rick. The wine was good. And the wine was good. Okay. Hey, Mr. Mr. Mayor, I just... I forgot. No, you can't have another one. <laughs> <laughs> you saw me playing with my Blackberry. I wasn't playing with it. I actually had a constituent uh, get a hold of me, and she was having trouble with hydro lines and such like. And I went over, and Annalene and Gordon solved our problem for her and got back who she should get out, how she get it. 
So that, I'm not charging $85 for that, just to let you know. <laughs> last night, last night I had two ball games, yeah. and each ball game I had somebody come up and talk to me about some of the, so our counselors are all busy, and we all have that, as you were saying, you're at a breakfast, and somebody talks to you about it, that's all part of the game that we all, all chimed up for, and uh, I wanted to reassure people that uh, I, I wasn't trying to say I was the only one that did that, but no. uh, that's what happens, you're all over the place, and that's the job. Well, I appreciate that, and I, I appreciate this council because we're all pretty well 24-7. I know everybody takes calls, everybody tries to be involved, and that's, that's important. Thank you, and that's all I have. Hooray. Yeah, 20 to 10. Hang on, I know. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Moved whoa. by Councilor Hamley, second by De Deputy Mayor Fist, the Committee of the Whole convenes the Town of Council, uh, the Town of Mineral Council. All in favor? Woo! Hound old boy, cigars for everybody. <laughs> Moved by Councilor Elliott, second by Councilor Turt, and the Council of the Town of Minnow ratifies motions made in the Committee of the Whole. All in favor? Mayor Bridge, I'm. Item 18A was the zoning bylaw amendment. We should table that or table it. it. That was opposed. Yep. All right. Moved by Councilor Turton, second by Councilor Faulkner, that the bylaw number 2014-42 being the bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the June 17, 2014 committee. Council may be reduced in red to first, second, and third time and pass an open council and seal the seal of the corporation. All in favor? Passed. Moved by Councillor Fisk, uh, Deputy Mayor Fisk, and oh, Council. Oh, oh, I, I, I finally blew that once. But well, they don't have Deputy Mayor here. See, I should have a DM there. <laughs> Move by Deputy Mayor Fisk and seconded by Councillor Turton. The Council of the Town of Minnow adjourns to meet again at the call of the mayor. All in favor? Yeah. Good thing that was the last one because I can't make two more mistakes. I'd have to quit. Well, the de Deputy voted against that one, so. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>